All right, ladies and gentlemen, Alan Cepeda alongside E.J. Sanchez and Rosie Vega giving you Thursday night football here in the great state of Texas. Thursday night edition as we are getting set for our third game of the season for the Glen Grizzlies as they will take on the visiting Knights of McAllen High School in Austin, Texas. E.J. Sanchez, how are you today? I'm doing well, Alan. How are you doing today? Doing good. Doing looking good. forward to this game. Looking forward to see a win. Uh, you know, just kind of recapping what happened last week. Last week, unfortunately, hopefully we can get the full four quarters in this week. Last mm -hmm. week, we were shortened after a, a tremendous stop by the Glen Grizzlies on fourth down, able to get the turnover, and then lightning struck within the 10 miles. We had a delay. Uh, right we were about the 10 minute mark lightning struck again so that second time they had to suspend the game and unfortunately both teams having to take a forfeit loss on that one mcneil was leading 25 to 14 but with the way that defense was able to make the stop and the way they were moved the ball at the end of the second half you kind of felt that glenn could hang around in that one yeah you definitely did and we're hoping that that carries over to this week the defense made a huge stop especially when they needed it all the momentum was on mcneil's side at the time and the offense was starting to hit its stride right when it needed to and in a game like that Winning the last quarter is all you were trying to do, and it was unfortunate that they couldn't finish it up. So when you have a game like this against McCallum, high-powered offense, a team that went very far last year, you're kind of looking at what Coach Schoenfeld wanted to do going into the season before they started district play, right? Setting up three very competitive games. You're going up against Liberty Hill. They're a state power. They're, you know, playoffs every single year. Then you get a McNeil team that even though they weren't that well last year, have high Division One talent in Jordan Curley. That kid Hutchinson, I'm sure he's going to end up playing somewhere as well. And then now this week, you come to McCallum, a team that's coming off of a 14-0 season, the first undefeated season in 70 years in that school's history. They go all the way to the state semis and lose to College Station. So these are the three games that they decided to put on their schedule early on in the year to get them ready for this district play that starts on September 28, 2018 at Elgin. Um, I like it. I like the idea of playing tough teams and teams that have been around and kind of seeing where you guys match up. Yeah, you got to give credit to Coach there. Coach obviously showing that they're not afraid, especially with the school only in its third year of existence. He's showing that they're not going to be pushed around. They're showing that they want to go up against these 5A schools, these 6A schools, and these state powers like a Liberty Hill or like a McCallum. McCallum 28-9 and over the last three seasons. So you start to get the feeling that Coach really has confidence in this tier's group. And he's got plenty of reason to, 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 to feel that way. We talked before the air. This team has a lot of playmakers on it. You know, the first two games of the season we've seen – you know some really good things we've seen some tough things but we've seen some some really good flashes of brilliance from this offense we've seen great play by Corin thompson whether he's out in the flat or he's running on screens or he's getting up the middle we've seen julian thomas uh julian morris excuse me lamont slade run the ball pretty well we've seen nate hatter and uh, jarvis henderson get deep so we've seen them do some things we've seen his defense come up with a football on turnovers put the ball on the ground so we have seen some great things but can this team put it together for an entire game and have a good showing against a team like McCallum. Yeah, that is the question. And the name you didn't mention, but one that I hope we were able to say a lot tonight, is Sam Martin. Martin didn't get a lot of touches in that last game. Most, most of it was Henderson and it was Thompson that was taking a bulk of the catches out there. And obviously Morris and obviously Slade got a lot of got a lot of attention from McNeil. So we're hoping that Martin, who's a really shifty kind of receiver, we're hoping that he can get involved in the offense early and early start. That's good, especially against a team like McCallum. But one thing you have to be careful of, McCallum's been behind in their first two games, and they have come back. And last week against Lehman, coming back in pretty dramatic fashion. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, McCallum, 2-0 and on the season, won the Taco Shack Bowl. They were actually down 20 to 13, no, 20 to 7, excuse me, in that one. Came back with two late touchdowns, including uh, a goal line stand, ball at the one-yard line, and they drive it down the field 99 yards for a score, turn around and get another score, and they win that one 21 to nothing, or 21 to 20, excuse me, for their first one. Then last week, same thing. Uh, they take a lead, then Lehman 27 unanswered points going into the half. It's 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 tied, and then they uh, McCallum pulls away in the fourth quarter, two late touchdowns. Uh, so here they are, 2-0. and a little different story for the uh, the Glen Grizzlies as they start off the season against Liberty Hill, 14-7 at the halftime in that one. They end up losing that one 49 to 21, and then last week, of course, the rain shortened, lightning shortened game 25 to 14. So, uh, two teams 
hopefully going in the same direction, but right now a little bit opposite. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of this McAllen team is last year they averaged 47 wow. points a game. Defense only giving up 16.7 points a game. Did so well that their head coach, Charles Taylor, actually got a promotion, goes to Pflugerville, moves up to 6A football. Uh, so he's excited about that. But then Tom Gammerdinger, defensive coordinator, who's been here the last four years, he gets promoted with that great defense that they've had the last two years. And so far this year they've done pretty well. Uh, he's the head guy in the job right now. Yeah, it really speaks to how well this McAllen team is coached. When you have a guy who, when you have a guy who has had a lot of success at McCallum, and then obviously unfortunate, but great for him to get a promotion. But you have a guy that's ready to step up right here and coach Gammerdinger, and so really speaks to how well McCallum is coached and how well infrastructure they have, especially on the coaching staff. So the one thing you look at last year, again, this team went all the way to the state semifinals. This the, the team. Uh, no Austin school district has gotten this far since 2001. So almost 20 years since the team has gotten all the way to the state semifinals. If you look at their roster, last year had 36 guys on the team last year. And Glenn right now this year has 52 guys. So I just let you know that that small group of guys they were able to battle through and get get going. Uh, fortunately for Glenn, ninth, uh, only 18 of those 22 starters graduated. So only four return. Most of those guys are on defense. And the big guy for them is Gabe Williams, a defensive back free safety. For them, he had interception last week. He's the leader. He's the quarterback of this defense. And he's going to try to cause some havoc tonight against the Grizzlies. Yeah, the Grizzlies, it's, what's going to be important for them is establishing their run game early. It's been led by Lamont Slade, obviously, you said, with Thompson. You want to get those guys going early. You try to get Thompson to maybe some screen passes, dump it out in the flat. We saw pregame. That's something that they were especially working on. We also want to see maybe some Julian Morris. Morris really got hot, especially when, right before the game got called. Morris looked like the bell cow on that last drive when Glenn answered right before the half. So he started to hit his stride. So it's important to establish the run game early so that way Drew McGuire is able to open up some lanes and try to get this offense going in the right direction. Yeah, they were working with Morris in the pregame, kind of catching some stuff out of the backfield. He's averaging eight yards a carry when he gets the ball going. He's got a 58-yard rushing touchdown and a 29-yard rushing touchdown. So he can break it out free if you get him open. So uh, it's going to take a lot for this offensive line to get going. They're probably going to be size-wise overmatched. When you look at the middle for this McAllen defense, you're looking at uh, – Junior defensive tackle Alvino Carabal, six foot one, two hundred and seventy pounds. Uh, he was the district newcomer of the year last year. And then the nose tackle uh, Lloyd Barrier, six one, three hundred and ten pounds. That's wow. a lot of meat in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I said it's important for the offensive line of Glenn to get going early and to make sure they're keying up on their blocks because when you have that kind of size in the middle of the field, it makes it all more important for the running backs to get off the tackles and try to get outside to break a good run. What does Glenn have to do in your mind after you saw him last week and you know what happened at Liberty Hill? What do they have to do first drive of this game to get going? On offense, it's just going to be uh, McGuire distributing the ball out well. You can't be focusing on one receiver. And obviously, as I already said, it's to get the run game going. And obviously, you have a lot of great rushers on this team. But one thing you want to do is you want to get that one guy going early. You want to have that kind of bell cow type of mentality to make sure that that guy can start to hit his stride and he can start to lead this offense. Absolutely, and the defense, we'll see how they'll handle it with this high-powered offense, how they're going to stop uh, the all-everything for this offensive team for McCallum. It is a running back number 21, the senior, Jalen Sutton, 340 yards on the ground. He had 88 in the first game, 252 rushing yards last week, not including the 88-yard kickoff return he had last week. Four total touchdowns, six total on the season. Uh, this kid is, is pretty much the entire heart and soul of this offense because the quarterback, he's only thrown the ball 14 times in two games, so they're not going to throw it too much tonight. It's going to be all more. It's all going to be Sutton here tonight. Yeah, especially, and we go back to that first game against Liberty Hill where they're, all their offense was on the ground, so we're probably going to look at a similar type of environment for this game, trying to stay on the ground and try to let Sutton make his plays. And in that game, as we all know, 14-7 to 7 at the half. Obviously, they weren't able to hang on in the second half. But you want to have that type of defensive mentality up front to not let the run push you around and to try to force them to go through the air, something that they're capable of but something they're not completely comfortable doing. Just going over some stats right now for McCallum. On the year, they are averaging 431 yards of offense, 120 pretty much, 119.5, 120 yards passing. And then they're averaging 313 yards a game on the ground. So that's going to be a tough thing for them to hold up. Uh, Glenn, defensively, if you look at Glenn's stats defensively, they're giving up 395 yards a game, 140 passing yards, and 254 yards. So something's going to have to give today that defense, hopefully they can push and, and force Cole Davis to throw the football. It's only 10 for 14. 
and a couple of his passes have been short screens. The guys jump out. I was down there, I was watching him throw, and he's got some highlights on max preps. He reminds me of a of a young Chad Pennington. He's got a yeah. little knuckleball. He's not going to sling it down the field. He's not going to zip it down there, but it's a, it's, it's a knuckleball, but it's a very accurate one. He'll put it right on the dime on a guy's chest and get them going. So, you know, if he's not accurate tonight, it's going to cause some trouble, and, and I'm looking forward to see you know, Noah Holmes, Alec Townsley, Brandon Spires, and Alex Wynn. Uh, hopefully someone get a pickoff interception. Yeah, they he turned took the, the ball over twice last week. Yeah, he took the words right out of my mouth, especially with Townsley, especially with the team that's going to be running the ball a lot. You're going to look for Townsley to be in the box more. It looks like they might load up the box against the team that runs the ball as much as McCallum. So we'll be looking for Townsley. Holmes, obviously the team leader in interceptions last season. So those two are the guys in the middle that really have to make it happen. Something we talked about um, before we went on air is that this team has forced, I think it was you said, seven fumbles. Seven fumbles, and you're only able to recover two. If they're able to try to get those turnovers tonight, they have to be able to capitalize and recover these because McCallum is a team that will cough it up. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to take a quick, quick break. We're about four minutes away from the National Anthem and kickoff. Quickly, keep up with the Grizzlies all season long on Twitter at Glenn Grizz Gridiron and use the hashtag all in for Glenn, Glenn G L E N N. And finally, for all Grizzly related information regarding freshman JV and varsity programs, check out the website at glennfootball.com. Get practice and game schedules. Get Coach Schoenfeld's weekly message every Monday. Visit glennfootball.com. We'll be back. Alan Spada, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega behind the glass on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. This is Kevin McAdams. You know, from the McAdams Company Creative, we love to make commercials. Let us make yours. Yep, that's me. While my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful, I've been given to understand that every once in a while, y'all might want to hear somebody different. So I went out and recruited some guys. So first, I'd like to introduce Blake. Good afternoon. My name's Blake Herrera, and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane. This guy over here, this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. True story. When I was in college, girls used to love it when I read their textbooks to them. And I'm Kevin, and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491, or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with the McAdams Company Creative. No longer working alone. I love to make commercials. Let me make yours. This is the K-Max Sports Network. Grizzly football here on the K-Max Sports Bite Media Network. Alex Peta, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega with you tonight for this Thursday night football contest as the Glen Grizzlies are coming out of the tunnel and they're on the field looking like the Clemson Tigers out there. <laughs> Full orange uniform, uh, orange pants, navy and white piping. And they got their orange jerseys, navy and white. Uh, lettering with the big white uh, lettering and the navy outlining. It's either the Broncos or the Clemson Tigers. What are you taking here for this Glenn uniform look? Hey, really bright, really nice. I really am digging the home uniforms. I'm looking forward to the away uniforms. I haven't been into an away game yet, so I'm looking for that. Especially with the new school, it's cool to come out with kind of like a bang like that. Well, I'm excited. I'm up here. I'm looking at the guys from down here. It looks like the jerseys are a little bit easier to see than when they had their Navy uniforms on. But it also, since it's Thursday night, reminds me of the color rush that the NFL was doing for a lot of years. It yeah. looks like this, uh, the Broncos color rush with the full orange uh, jersey. Uh, the J the program uh, Glenn is looking for a sweep. Their freshman team came up with an eight nothing victory against McCallum, and their JV team beat up on Salado thirty eight to eight. So let's see if this Glenn football program can come out with a three zero sweep here against McCallum as they're running onto the field. And if you look on their roster across. They're running short as again, as I mentioned last year, only 36 guys in the team. I'm looking across. It looks like I'm looking at a baseball <laughs> roster. Yeah, what that does during practices for, for McCallum, obviously, is it allows them to get more quality reps instead of having to spread it out with probably four guys deep at every single position. So that's probably a strategy that McCallum obviously has taken for a number of years. It's something that Glenn is going to have to watch out for because that does help with the continuity of everything but also make sure that these guys know what they're doing, especially since there's such little to go around. Also, too, if you look at the depth chart for McCallum, there are a lot of two-way players on this team, including the quarterback, Cole Davis. He'll line up at linebacker for them as well. So hopefully that's an advantage for Glenn. Guys are running both ways. They're going to get tired. They're going to get beat up. So more the reason to run this football right down their throat, get guys beat up, banged up. So when they're coming on offense, you know, they're not going to be as crisp. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say right there, especially Cole Davis in such a key position on the defense, such as linebacker. It's really important 
for him to be able to keep his conditioning and hopefully Glenn can take advantage of that. And we will send you out right now for the national anthem presented by the Glenn Grizzly Band. Job by Glenn Grizzly Band. It looks like a, one of the players' moms was singing the national anthem. So great job by her. As we are almost ready for kickoff, wind blowing. As you heard that, if you listen to the national anthem, you see the wind blowing. You look at the flags uh, in the in the end zone. Uh, it is blowing here tonight. Well, at least right now. So we'll see if that affects who gets the kickoff and, and which side does the team defend to um, what side to decide to choose. Excuse <laughs> me. Good. Uh, my words. <laughs> yeah, the captain's going out for the coin toss right now. Uh, captains representing the Glen Grizzlies this week will be the center, Jacob Trim. He's going to be one out there as long as Jeff Francis Dyke, who's going to be huge in this game, especially since he's going up against that, especially going against that offensive line that's opened up so many holes. And Brian Creel, who had a huge tackle in last week's game. So those are the three guys representing the Grizzlies tonight. And as I mentioned, follow the, the Grizzlies on Twitter. Uh, they actually gave out their weekly awards last week, and even though it was a lightning-shortened game, Jeff Francis Dyke, who got the, the MVP for the team on that, and Jacob Trim got an uh, offensive MVP too, so maybe, maybe a little trend. get an MVP, get to go out there and be a part of the uh, the kickoff, or the coin toss, excuse me. So it looks like McCallum might receive, and I think Glenn's going to kick off. Uh, as the teams will both shake hands at... Midfield as all the referees getting together, and we're gonna gonna have football here. It actually looks like Glenn is gonna receive the kick. So you already asked me what the, the keys of the game for Glenn. What's gonna be important to you that Glenn comes out and does early on offense? As again, as I mentioned, those big boys up front, they're gonna have to push and make ways because those guys are gonna break up a lot of runs. So they're gonna have to find ways to either bounce outside or, or kind of go. Sometimes the biggest strength is to go right at somebody. So uh, I want to see them establish a run early. Uh, we know that McGuire can throw the football. He's shown us that in two games already. So, but they got to be able to get a, an, an established. Uh, run game up the middle four or five yards so Jarvis Henderson and Sam Martin are back to receive the kick Sam Martin the name we already talked about good to see him out there trying to make some plays tonight hopefully he can be a difference maker well Henderson had that big 31 yard kickoff return last week as well took them all the way to the 41 yard line so hopefully one of them can get going here as it's going to be Trinidad de la Garza set to kick off for the McCallum Knights McCallum all white uniforms have a royal blue numbering, royal blue on the shoulder pads as well. Silver helmet, kind of like the Detroit Lions uniform if you're at home. Again, Glenn in their all orange uniform. So we are sitting now at 7.04 Central Time. 
And the kick is up, and it is off to short kick. It's going to bounce, and Townsley is going to fall on. It's going to bounce off his chest, but Townsley is able to recover and down the ball at the 35-yard line. That'll yeah, be important for Glenn to try to get off to a good stop. And good job by Townsley right there. Not really, not especially not what they're expecting there. Nothing huge that McCallum was expecting. It was a good job for Townsley to fall on that. Good field position for the Glenn Grizzlies. Absolutely. Don't try to do too much. It took a bounce off his chest, almost like a third baseman. Mm -hmm. stay, have the ball stay in front of you and fall right on top, and he did that. And Glenn is going to have pretty good field position as they will start at the 35-yard line. 11.57 on the clock. First play of the game. As McGuire rolls out to his right, he's looking for something. He's going to throw it away out of bounds. Yeah, nothing there. Right? He was intended for Jarvis Henderson, who averaged 21 yards a catch last season. So obviously trying to get him involved in the offense early. Yeah, that middle kind of blew up for him, so he had to roll out to the right. Grizzlies going left to right on your radio. McGuire shotgun snap as Morris is to his right. Four-man front for McCallum. As Morris shifts out, it's going to be a screen to him. He's going to get outside past the 40 to the 45 across midfield. He's going to get all the way to the 42-yard line. A big pick up there for Julian Morris as he picks up 23 yards on the play. Yeah, did a good job of getting outside, and he was pushed out by the senior, Elijah Griffin, who also doubles as a running back. Just got out to him, just pushed him enough to get him out of bounds. Ball at the 42-yard line, so a 23-yard pickup for Morris as they are looking for more. Now it's Thompson in motion. He's going to go north to south. McGuire rolls to the right. Falls out of play as it gets right past Thompson. He was kind of holding for a flag as the defender on the play was Joseph Limon. Uh, great stop there for McCallum. Yeah, you see early what Glenn's trying to do. They're trying to do what we saw during pregame warm was trying to get into the flat and let their big playmakers try to make something happen. We've seen three straight passes to open up the game for Glenn. As Lamont Slade is in now at running back. And the give's going to be to Thompson. He's going to roll out to the right. He's going to cross the 40 to the 35. He's going to head out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. So a 12-yard pickup for Corin Thompson and a first down for the Grizzlies. Yeah, you saw the Glenn bench right there. Not happy that it seems like Gabe Williams had a couple of extra pushes and shoves that they got to the sideline. The bench begging for a flag not to come. But it was a good job right there. And... Off to a good start already, as we said, a key to the game was going to be for Glenn. 11.28 on the clock, still no score. Glenn driving ball is on the Knights' 30-yard line as a give now. is pushed up the middle. It looks like it's Thompson. He's going to carry everybody to about the 22-yard line. So a pickup of eight reminded me of that Monday night play with Marshawn Lynch where he carried everybody into the end zone. Great job there. Yeah, Thompson did a good job right there. And it's weird because you usually see Morris is the type of back that you see try to take everybody with him, but it's a good job. I mean, it's, it does wear a defense down as the game goes on. So two 12-yard carries for Thompson so far in this one. Ball's at the 22-yard line. Actually a 13-yard pickup. Second and two. Give his to Morris. He's going to bruise up the middle. He's going to break off a defender, and he's pushed back again as number nine on the defense. I don't have number nine on my sheet, but number nine makes the stop. Actually, it is Caleb Green, the sophomore defensive lineman. So he'll make the stop as he was holding and waiting for that defense to knock down Morris. So it's third and two after no gain. Yeah, really the first play of that Glenn's run where the defense for McCallum really stepped up and made a play. And when you're on that side of the field, that's good news if you're Glenn. Third and two, Grizzlies need the 20-yard line. 10-34 o'clock running here in the first quarter. Snap, and they give it to Morris again. He's going to break outside across the 15-yard line. He's going to get down to the about the 14 yard line so a pickup of eight and a first down for Julian Morris and yeah, another tackle by Gabe Williams so it seems like we're gonna be saying his name a lot when he's talking when we're talking about defense kind of like the Townsley on the defensive side for McCallum they'll give Morris nine as the ball is placed at the 13 yard line first and ten for the Grizzlies and give us to Slade this time he's gonna push up the middle and he's going to get across to about the 14, to the excuse me, the nine yard line. So a pickup of four yards for Slade. Yeah, I love what Glenn's doing right now. Really balanced offense so far, and it looks like they're going at a good tempo. Everybody's touching the ball. Thompson, Slade, Morris, McGuire's tossing around a little bit. Second and five from the eight yard line. Great first drive for Glenn. To see if they can cap it off here. Double backs in the backfield. Shotgun snap to McGuire. He's going to give it to Morris. He's going to bounce out to the left. 
going to try to get to the five yards. going to push, and he's going to get all the way down to about the three-yard line. We're going to mark him at the three, actually at the two, so a pickup of six. Yeah, touchdown saving tackle right there for Elijah Griffin. It looked like he was about to break to the outside as he leaned for the pylon. Referee didn't seem to give it to him, so it looks like they're inside the three-yard line. That's the one, actually. One. Important to capitalize right here if you're Glenn. First and goal from the one-yard line. Split backs again for Glenn. Shotgun snap. The give is to Morris. He's going to push through, and he is in the end zone for a touchdown. Touchdown Grizzlies on the one-yard touchdown by Julian Morris. A 65-yard drive for the Grizzlies to open this game. You couldn't have drawn it up any better. And when you see in the NFL, when you see in college, they're scripting up the first 10 plays. If you're doing that, if you're Glenn, that is exactly what you came into this game wanting to do, to getting off to a good start, mixing it with McGuire, mixing it with Thompson, getting Slade in there at the end. That was exactly what you wanted if you're Glenn, and it leads to a score. Absolutely. So Pedro Soto is out to kick the extra point as Sam Martin holds it down, and it is good. 7-0 on the opening drive for the Grizzlies. In this one, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E Texas.com and also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. From West Texas all the way to the Bayou and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All this is the KMAC Sports Network bringing your teams to you. This is the KMAX Sports Network. 7-0 in the first quarter, 9-0-3. Glenn putting together a brilliant 65-yard drive to open the game after that what was a shank kick or bounce kick that bounced off Alex Townsley. He was able to recover at the 35, and the Glenn office did the rest as everybody got involved, capped off by a one-yard touchdown run by Julian Morris here in the first quarter. Soto is ready to kick off from the 40 and there's the whistle and here we go ball is in the air right down the middle and it's going to be returned by number 25 and he is met immediately by Alex Townsley and a group of guys at the 25 yard line so great hit by Townsley and Tino Depaz brought that one out to the 25 for the Knights yeah we saw Townsley made a couple special teams tackle last week and it's really good when you see somebody that well constructed to play on both sides of the ball he's going to be huge and probably the best tackler on this defense for Glenn and the good thing for Glenn is as we've mentioned you mentioned earlier in the broadcast EJ that McCallum out to these slow starts well if Glenn can take advantage and score like they did in the first drive it might be too much for McCallum to come back from so here we are first drive of the game Cole Davis will be next behind center and he'll be next to his back sudden as the ball snapped up high it's going to get away from Davis as he throws one in the air just to get it away so it's a high snap early in this one he was able to corral it and threw that one wide a dangerous throw that ball was up in the air for a while yeah he was lucky that nobody was on that side of the field you see the referees talking near the 23 yard line to see if they will penalize him for it but it was a good job by Glenn not letting him recover from that and causing some stress in the backfield absolutely looking possibly for a grounding call there's no flag on the play so I don't think they're going to do anything about it as they will keep the ball at the 25 yard line sometimes that shotgun snap is tough I mean a lot of high school quarterbacks they don't go under center because it's tough to make the drops and get the reads but that shotgun snap can be tough first give is to Sutton and he's met immediately on the defense by number 33 Brian Krills he is tackled for a two yard loss second and 12 excuse me third and 12 quickly for McCallum yeah this Glenn defense came to play at least on these first two plays they're causing some serious stress on that offensive line of McCallum and Creel again Creel always finds a way to get in between a gap and make a big tackle in the backfield so it'll be huge if Glenn can get off the field right here the defensive change Sam Martin now on defense at cornerback as Davis rolls out to the right he's looking for a pass Jamal Johnson pressures him and that ball's going to be thrown out of bound a quick three and out for McCallum great job on the pressure by Glenn's defense here three and out Glenn is very happy about that right there. Really nothing came, came about on that play. He rolled out to the right. And as we said at the top of the broadcast, what you want to do is force McCallum to do something they're not used to doing. And with Sutton not being able to break off anything on his first run, it forces Davis to throw the ball when he's already played a series on the defensive side of the ball. So, again, we're going to see Sam Martin make a play some way, somehow. He's on special teams. He's on offense. And they had him at right corner so far to start this game off. So he's back to receive the punt at around the Grizzly 45 
as De La Garza boots one. That's going to go out of bounds at the 49-yard line inside of Knight territory. So, again, the Grizzlies going to take off a great field position in this one. Yeah, obviously when you see Davis already starting 0 for 2, a seventh of what he's already thrown total this season on the first drive of the game. Glenn is excited that they're already forcing Davis to do something he hasn't really done, and it's huge for that defensive line to stop Sutton on that first play, try to set the tone. But the offense right here can really make a big statement and try to create a deficit that McCallum isn't able to come back from. First drive for the Grizzlies. They had 42 yards on the ground, 23 through the air on that 65-yard drive. So let's see what they decide to do in this one as Julian Morris is split back. That's actually Lamont Slate split back to the left. So they bring in Shamir Nichols in motion, and the give is to him. He's going to stop, break towards the middle, and he's going to possibly get a yard on that one. They'll mark him at the 45-yard line, so a gain of one on the play. Yeah, Alvino Carabajal was the junior on the tackle right there. He just swallowed him up right there on the middle of the field. So one-yard pickup for Nickel. Three wide receivers set for the Grizzlies. Second and nine. McGuire rolls out to the right. He's looking for a play. He's going to throw deep, and it's Henderson off of his hands out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Ball was a little bit... A little bit wide, but uh, Henderson's got to come up with that one. Yeah, good coverage there by Gabe Williams. Seems like he gave McGuire only one lane to throw in. It did look like he hit it, but even if he does catch it, not 100% sure if he was able to get his foot in bounds. Third and nine now for the Grizzlies as the ball's on the McCallum 45-yard line, 738. They have a 7 nothing lead. Double backs in the backfield. As they fake the handoff to Nichols. And he's looking deep. He's going to have Nate Hatter wide open at the 25-yard line. Pushing all the way through. And he's going to get brought down at the 16-yard line. A 29-yard pickup for Nate Hatter on third down. Bust the coverage in the secondary for McCallum. Hatter is so dangerous, especially right here in the red zone. But in the middle of the field, it opened up a seam right there. And McCallum just forgot about Hatter. And Hatter has been so dy dynamic thus far this season, especially on plays like that. Great pickup there for Hatter. He's wide open. No one was there next to him. Beautiful play by McGuire to roll out the fake the handoff to Nichols, and that opened it up. And uh, McCallum bit on that one. Thompson in motion, and they'll give it to him as he's going to break a tackle. He's going to roll outside, try to get back to the line of scrimmage. He might lose a yard on this one, and he does. They'll move the ball back to the McCallum 17-yard line, second and 11 for the Grizzlies. Darius Lewis was able to push him out right there. As we keep saying, looks like the referees are calling for an injury timeout. The injured knight on the field is Elijah Griffin. Hate to see that. Absolutely. Griffin, the senior running back and defensive back. He's one of those guys that kind of run both ways. He's on about third on the depth chart for the running back. So, again, Glenn moving the ball pretty well. A big third down conversion in two drives in a row. So, Glenn able to convert on third down. That's going to make it happen for them. In the first game, they had 19 first downs against Liberty Hill, 10 last week. So, they're about 20 first downs per game if you extrapolate that. So, uh, moving the ball here well. Getting first downs, they got the ball at the 17-yard line. Now, if they're able to capitalize here in the red zone, it, red zone here, and put up six, it's going to be important for the defense to not be satisfied with that. This McCallum team believes that there is no deficit they can't come back from. Something that Anderson and Lehman both made the mistake of doing is underestimating the fight of the offense and the grit of this defense, and they were able to come back in both of those games. So, if Glenn is able to do it, they will need to come up with a big play so unfortunately again it is elijah Gr griffin the injured knight on the field uh they're attending to his left knee he's going to get up on his own so obviously he'll get a big uh, round of applause for the uh everybody glenn fans and the mccallum fans as well here at gupton stadium in cedar park let's take a moment to mention one of our frontline sponsors los reyes mexican restaurants Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant on 251 Bell Boulevard right here in Cedar Park, Texas. They have the best happy hour in town. Starts at 2 from 2 to 6. Get more information at their website at LosReyesTexas.com. Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant. It was good to see Elijah Griffin get up on his own power. You hope that he's able to come back into this game because he is such a dynamic player for that McCallum defense. So second and 11 from the 17. Grizzlies need the 6 yard. They're going with four wide receivers set right now. So McGuire's going to move Morris in motion. Everybody's out. The throw is deep in the end zone for Anderson. A little high as the coverage there was by number four, uh, Gabe Williams. Again, as you mentioned, we're going to hear that kid's name a lot tonight. 
Yeah, Jarvis Henderson tried to go up and make a play, and it seems like McGuire threw it into double coverage, and unfortunately, Nate Hatter was right there in the slot working the middle, and it looked like he had an easy land to get in for a touchdown, but a big McGuire trying to make a big play early wasn't able to capitalize. Aggressive play calling by Dennis. They moved Morris into motion. They were going five wide on that one. Third and 11 again. This time, three wide receivers with Hatter in the backfield along with Morris. Shotgun snap. Give is to Morris. He's going to push up the middle and get... Still going, still pushing, and he's going to be at the 12-yard line. So a pickup of five, and they'll say they're going to probably bring on Pedro Soto for a field goal. Nonetheless, a, a five-yard gain on the play. Carbejo, again, was right there in the defense. We talked about it at the, again in the pregame that the middle of that defense is so hard to penetrate, but the offense doing a good job of trying to – Nick and knack at them and try to dent them a little up front here at the beginning of the game. So they're going for it on fourth down instead of trying to kick a field goal, which would be a 29-yarder. So fourth and six for the Grizzlies. As they're going to fake the snap and the handoff. As McGuire has got nowhere to go, he's looking for a play. He's going to try to fall. The ball's picked off by McCallum. Brought all the way down at the 32-yard line. Intercepted by number 54, Connor Boggs. Yeah, the sophomore coming up with a big play right there. And if you're Glenn, that was the absolute worst-case scenario. McGuire trying to make something happen. You have to give him that. But when you're throwing it into a coverage with a receiver that wasn't designed to be in the play, it can be costly, and it was right there. Looks like the Knights are going to take over from their own 31. Great defensive play. When you saw McGuire nowhere to go, try to make a play, and he just heaved that one up. And a great athletic play by Connor Boggs to pick that up and give McCallum new life. So instead of getting points on the board, now McCallum starting their drive at the 31-yard line. The give is to Sutton, and he goes nowhere. Maybe gets a yard on that one. They'll mark him at the 33-yard line. They'll give him two, second and eight for the Knights. Yeah, especially when Sutton had 200-plus rushing yards last week. It's nice to see over his first two carries is not even in the plus side yet. Yeah, the plan has got to be to stop Sutton. They know that Davis is not going to throw the ball too much, so... As he's going to roll out now to right, he's going to take it himself on the ground. And he is met immediately by a swarm of defenders. And it's Brian Creel leading the way on that tackle for Glenn. Yeah, it looked like a seven-yard pickup right there. And that hopefully, if you are Glenn, it does start to wear on the quarterback Davis since he is playing both ways tonight. And that's going to be more the, the to look at the injury of Griffin if he comes back in the game. Again, McCallum already with a short roster. You don't want to play a man down, especially when you're defensive starter. So it'll be a third and two for the Knights. They need the 41-yard line. They're at the 39 right now. 5.09 on the clock. Grizz is leading at 7-0. Snap, and the give is to Sutton. And he's going to push, and he's going to get stopped. And he throws his hands up in disgust. I don't think he's going to get it. And the ball's going to be marked at the 40-yard line. And it looks like Glenn came up with the fumble, and it looks like Sutton lost control of it, and Glenn, wow. they do have it, and it will go back the other way. A huge defensive play. We talked, I talked about it as the key to the game on the defense side of the ball. You've been causing fumbles. Now it's time to recover them. Huge defensive play to try to get the momentum back. Looks like an offensive lineman for McCallum is limping off the field, but a huge play by that defense. Now the offense has to take advantage with 4.59 left to go here in the first quarter. Great pickup. I completely missed that one. He like ran into a wall. Then he turned away and threw his hands up, and the ball was at the 40. But as you're right, uh, Glenn able to recover it. That's their eighth force fumble of the year, the third time they've recovered one on the season. So second chance now for Glenn to kind of relive that drive that they had going as they take over at the 40-yard line of McCallum. Quick pass is out to Henderson. He's across the 30. He's going to get inside the 25. He's going to get brought down forward progress at the 23-yard line. So a 17-yard pickup to Henderson to start this drive. Yeah, Henderson wanted to see him involved more in the offense. He did a good job right there, almost a basketball move. Picked it up and carried it over the defender, the cornerback that was defending him at the time. And it looks like that defender was Joseph Limon, the junior linebacker. So again, Glenn starting to get some rhythm offensively. Ball's now at the 28-yard line. 24-yard line, excuse me. As a snap, fake to give. And it's there for Martin, and he makes the catch. going to push through, get all the way to the five-yard line. What a play by Sam Martin. A beautiful catch and a tight throw there from Drew McGuire to get the ball down all the way to the five-yard line. Definition of making something. Ten-yard line. Definition of making something out of nothing. Martin, it looked like. Looked like he wasn't going to get to the ball fast enough. Looked like the linebacker beat him, but somehow snatched it out of the air and was able to get inside. 
Grizzlies moving. Ball at the 11. And a timeout called on the field. And first timeout charge to the Grizzlies. Yeah, I'm sure. Drew McGuire is on fire tonight. Making big throws. That interception, great way to bounce back. That's the only you know, blemish he'll have. But he's been throwing the ball and delivering some strikes to his players here tonight. Yeah, McGuire obviously doing a great job. And what, that's exactly what you want to do. Create a balanced offense, especially where they have to honor the passing lanes. And if you are running the ball well, like Glenn has done tonight, McGuire is all that more important because he is able to get those open passing lanes. Right there, Martin, a huge play by him to try to make something out of nothing. He was able to get inside and pick up a first down for Glenn. So they're going to need to keep this offense going because McCallan is not going to give in. We've seen them display that. So Drew McGuire has completed four passes for 82 yards in this one. As there's 408 on the clock, Glenn trying to figure out some play calling here. As they have the ball at the 11-yard line. So they've been moving it into McCallum territory all night long and looking to cash in here as after the turnover on the last drive and they force a fumble again. So uh, big possession here. Yeah, I like this timeout by Coach right here, especially if you were in the red zone last time, wasn't able to make a play. Now you want to make sure you're calm, want to make sure that everybody's on the same page going forward inside the 15. Absolutely. So Lamont Slade in at backfield for the Grizzlies. Shotgun snap. And they give it to him. He's going to bounce to the outside. No, it's a fake. And the ball is in the back of the end zone. Sam Martin unable to hold on to it. Oh, they faked the give to Slade. And I thought he had it. But Faye route to Martin in the back of the end zone. Unable to come up with it. Yeah, fooled us up here. But 50-50 ball they wanted to throw up for Martin. And we also, obviously, as we know from talking to Coach, Martin has great hands. And if you're going to throw a 50-50 ball, if you're going to pick one guy on this Glen offense to throw it to, it's going to be Sam Martin. Second and 10 from the 11, 4.02 left in the first quarter. Snaps to McGuire, he's back to pass as he finds Henderson inside the 10, inside the 5. He's going to push his way in for a touchdown, an 11-yard touchdown by Jarvis Henderson. Grizzlies lead it 13 to nothing. Obviously, when you don't, when you aren't able to make the play in the end zone the first time, there's no reason to stop, especially from your one of your biggest red zone threats. They went right back to him. He was able to capitalize. 13 nothing Grizzlies. That's all Henderson on that play. That ball was behind the 11 yard line. He had to make a couple of jukes and fight his way all the way through. Picks up a touchdown as Soto getting ready for the extra point. As trim snaps. Martin holds. Kick is up. Right down the middle. Through for the extra point. Grizzlies lead it. 14 to nothing. 3.54 left in the first quarter. We'll be back on the KMAX Sports Right Media Network. You know, from the McAdams Company Creative, we love to make commercials. Let us make yours. Yep, that's me. While my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful, I've been given to understand that every once in a while, y'all might want to hear somebody different. So I went out and recruited some guys. So first, I'd like to introduce Blake. Good afternoon. My name's Blake Herrera, and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane. This guy over here, this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. True story. When I was in college, girls used to love it when I read their textbooks to them. And I'm Kevin, and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491. Or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with the McAdams Company. 14 0, your Grizzlies lead it here. Rosie Vega, EJ Sanchez, I'm Alan Cepedo. Al Cepeda. Pedro is actually <laughs> kicking this one off. And it's going to be returned by DePez at the 11. And he's met immediately by Jamal Johnson. Heads up play by Johnson as the ball will come out to the 24-yard line. A generous spot there by the official nonetheless, but a great job by Johnson. And DePaz was lit up on that return. This Glenn team is firing on all cylinders right now. Special teams coming out, flying around, making plays. The defense not allowing their biggest playmaker to get going. And the offense so balanced. McGuire's on fire right there. Henderson getting it going. This team is as good as we've seen them all year. So you, we, we were asking each other, what would be the best case scenario for Glenn to start this game? I don't think either of us could have drawn this up. 14-0. They've had three red zone possessions. And they have put 14 points on the board. Drew McGuire, 4 for 11 for 93 yards and a touchdown. And a touchdown run for Julian Morris. So 14-0 as McCallum takes over at their own 24-yard line. Davis back to pass. That ball's short. 
as it was intended by for number one Darius Lewis. Ball skits in front of him. Yeah, and even if Lewis comes up with that, he's going to be immediately swallowed by the free safety Noah Holmes. So again, the defense doing its part here early in the game with 3:46 left to go in the first quarter. So second and ten for the 24. As the referee is going to hold up time here. Playcock still running though at 17. As Davis is staring in at Gammerdinger trying to get an offensive play call. He's yelling an audible out to the players. Nine seconds now on the play clock. Second and ten. Snap as he's going to roll out to the left now. He's going to break through. He's going to have a nice healthy gain as that ball gets to about the 30-yard line. So six-yard pickup for Cole Davis. It'll bring up third and four for McCallum. Yeah, I'm looking at my stat line right now. And Cole Davis, they were... McCallum's hoping into this game that they wouldn't even have to give Davis three attempts, and obviously he's missed on all three. So Glenn doing what they're trying to do, obviously read the scouting report and watch some good tape because they're neutralizing their best weapons early. So Glenn's showing blitz now. They're bringing everybody in the box. They have eight in the box right now. Uh, so there's going to be a pass outside, caught by receiver, and he's going to get out to about the 44-yard line. They'll mark him. That's number 13 to Kai Stalberry, and a first down for him. First first down of the game for McCallum. Yeah, it looked like that was a 14-yard pickup and just created some space right there between him and number 13 for Glenn. He's Martin on the defense. So five wide receivers set showing now for McCallum as Davis is all over the place shouting signals. 14 seconds left on the play clock as they'll bring in Sutton in motion quick pass to him he's going to get the ball and he's met immediately wrapped up breaks a tackle still going and he finally gets met by a swarm of defenders and they'll give him forward progress as the ball bounces out but they will say he is down forward progress at the 43 yard line so he actually use, loses a yard on the play yeah, that's a good job by that defense again even though the play was whistled dead able to get that ball out again and you like what you're seeing from the Glenn defense. They are, it's almost like an NFL defense. They are bringing guys in, bringing guys out, rotating, get a fresh rush in there. As they've been showing seven and eight men in the box, forcing Davis to throw second and 11 from their own 43. They need the Grizzly 46 for a first down. Shotgun snap. Davis back to pass. He's looking. He's getting pressured. And he's brought down by number 52 of the Glenn defense. Pedro Cervantes goes by Petey, the senior, comes up with a big play, <laughs> able to get into the backfield. 154 left to go in the first quarter. This defense is will not be pushed around by this ground game that McKellen came in that was firing on all cylinders before they started today. What a play there from Petey. He got a lot of pressure. Wrap him up, hold him until your buddies come and help you out. And they were able to make that play as we have some substitutions coming in for Glenn. Third and long, third and 17 for the Grizzlies. They need... For the uh, Knights, excuse me. They're at their own 37. They need the Grizzly 46 for a first down. Looks like we're going to have a timeout for McCallum. Another one of our sponsors, Dream Home Finders in Austin. Find your next dream home, whether it's a newly constructed or brand new renovated home. Find your next home at DreamFinderAustinHomes.com. Yeah, you see again Jalen Sutton so far. Five carries for no yards. And especially when you come off a 200-yard rushing performance like he 50. did last week. <laughs> like just a huge monstrous game that he was coming off. He was obviously expecting to try to continue that trend. Glenn obviously did their homework on that offensive line and did their homework on him because he hasn't been able to break anything. You saw him on that last play try to get back around, and there was nothing for him to do. Obviously lost the yard. Well, like I was saying earlier, they're bringing eight in the box. They are going to force Davis to throw the football. He's even had some five wide receiver sets out there, and they still can't get a pass. Completely. They good. are going to force him to throw the ball. Third and 17 now. Now they'll let the defenders play back as they'll only rush four or five. As the snap is to Davis, he's back to pass. A long throw. What a catch there by Lewis. As he's going to get all the way down to the 40-yard line. And a first down. That's a huge pickup. That's actually number 13, uh, Starberry, on the play. Wow. Yeah, so it looks like on the offense for McCallum, it's going to be Stawberry through the air, and it's going to be Sutton on the ground. But it was a great catch, and it was a great throw right there by Davis. 23-yard pickup on the play. 
So the ball's now at the Grizzly 40-yard line, a minute to go in the first quarter. Give it to Sutton again. Now he's going to break one free, and he's going to get inside the 20, down all the way at the 7-yard line. What a run there by Sutton for 33 yards. Finally broke it free. Yeah, Sutton's been hunting for that all game, and Glenn's job right there is to make sure that he doesn't get in the habit of doing it. First down for McCallum. That's what they needed. A big pass by Davis came up big, and then a big run there for Sutton. First and goal from the seven-yard line, 43 seconds in the first quarter. Snap, Davis going to roll out to the left, and he runs into some traffic. So he'll pick up maybe a yard as they'll mark him at the six-yard line. Yeah, Davis not scared to run it himself, and you see a lot of quarterbacks today try to go with a slide approach or try to dive and make sure they don't get hit. Davis is going in there full flesh. He's trying to get hit. He and plays he linebacker on defense, <laughs> so he's used to laying the wood, so uh, trying to lay something there. So second and, second and goal from the six. If you're able to hold McCallum to a field goal right here, that's huge for the defense. Absolutely. Sudden in the backfield next to quarterback. Throw is a screen. Low, inside, and a touchdown. Six-yard touchdown pass to Darius Lewis, who had five catches for 97 yards last week. Picks up a six-yard touchdown right here. 14-6, Grizzlies. Yeah, just a good executed screen right there on the far sideline. Nothing really Glenn could do, especially when you have such little space to work with. At third and 17. You don't want that to come back to haunt you if you are Glenn. That's a tough spot there to be in third and 17 type of defense that they were rolling out all night. But a big conversion there for McCallum. As Sutton bangs through for 33 yards and then a six-yard touchdown to Darius Lewis. So De La Garza just got it off. There's going to be a flag on the play as he was hit and he's still down on the ground. Extra point is good. It's 14-7. Yeah, so we'll try to see if it looks like from what it can only be with the kicker down. It looks like it'd be running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. It looks like it's only two penalties it could be. But it looks like the snap was mishandled right there. Yeah. And can't blame Glenn for trying to make a play. He is still down on the ground. So, unfortunately, an injured player for McCallum as he starts to sit up. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. 14-7 here on the Vite Media, KMAC Sports Network. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the state capital if it was full of sports. I mean, the rotunda is more than large enough for basketball or volleyball. And let's face it, anything we do in there is going to be better than what's going on right now. Plus, those guys only work every two years. We bring your teams to you every doggone day. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. Hey Booster parents, get involved is a new all-in-one tool that helps you raise funds, sign up volunteers, collect items, and promote your event or cause. It's never been so easy to get so much done. Forget the multiple volunteer, fundraising, and sign up lists, it's now all-in-one. Get involved today at GetInvolvedCo.com. That's GetInvolvedCo.com. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, we are right in the middle of them. Smile. Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma. Bringing your team's team since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. So we're back, Alan Cepeda, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega with you. KMAX Sports Thursday Night Football Edition. Glenn Grizzlies leading this one 14-7. McCallum just got on the scoreboard with a six-yard touchdown pass to Takai Starberry. To Darius Lewis, excuse me. Uh, extra point was good by Trinidad De La Garza, but he was injured on the play as it was a roughing the kicker penalty as well. It's going to be assessed on the kickoff, but he's down. He's the only kicker that they have, so hopefully he's okay. And we will still double-check on number three, Elijah Griffin, to see if he's returned back into the game. So two injuries so far early on in this game for McCallum. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Glenn reacts, especially when their defense kind of like a backbreaker. A third and 17, you've done so much to try to neutralize their weapons. 
and lined up on the 45. McCallum might try to see if they can pull off an onside here, especially with the field position. So De La Garza won't be kicking. It'll be uh, Joseph Limon, who's the backup quarterback. He plays linebacker, and now he's here as a second-string kicker. As he's going to line drive a kick in and return by Henderson at the 20, and he pushes all the way to the 24-yard line. So best-case scenario for the Grizzlies, they actually take over at the 26-yard line on a generous spot there by the official. Yeah, this offense needs to get up and going off the ground. And it's interesting that, again, McCallum has gone for that sort of line drive kick twice, and it hasn't. that's the first time that it actually helped them out, and it led to good field position on the defensive side of the ball for McCallum. So they will move it back to the 24 now. Uh, the official line judge came out to the 26. So the ball will be at the 24-yard line. 11.52 to go. 11.56 to go in the second quarter. Grizzlies leading it 14-7. They'll take over at the 24-yard line. As Hatter is in motion in the backfield. And Glenn's going to come out. And they're going to have to take a timeout. Their second timeout of the half. Mm. Yeah, that, we're hoping that, that that doesn't come back and haunt them, especially if they're trying to drive down. We saw McNeil, how it paid off for them having an extra timeout last game, yep. having an extra timeout at the end of the half. So obviously coach isn't going to be happy about that one, wasting one when they just came out of a break. Absolutely. So if they can convert and get the drive going, they'll take it. But you, know, you have to kind of be ready when you're coming out of a kickoff to know what you're going to do. So. As I mentioned, keep up with the Grizzlies all season long on Twitter at Glen Grizz Gridiron and use the hashtag all in for Glen. Yeah, the student section for Glen, although it's a Thursday night, usually on Fridays we see a really crowded area, but tonight really no shortage for Glen fans as they're excited about the football team and seeing where this team can go this season. Well, they're excited about this start as well as they lead it 14 to 7. As this offense has been firing on all cylinders, they're, they're ready to get out there for their fourth drive of the game. We're waiting for the referees to kind of get everything going. Ball is now down at the 24-yard line. Julian Morris switch sides to the right side of McGuire, and they give it to him. He's going to run right up the middle, hurdle a couple of players, and he's going to get down to the 27-yard line, so a pickup of three for Morris. Yeah, one of the guys he was able to evade with his legs was Ryan Bonesteel, the senior linebacker. I was looking at that earlier today. What a name for a linebacker. <laughs> Bone Ryan Bonesteel. That's a great name. <laughs> Second and seven from the 27. They need the 34 for the first down. Henderson split out to the right. As they're going to give it to Thompson, he's going to roll outside, get past one defender. He's going to get inside the 35, and he's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So an 11-yard pickup for Corin Thompson on the sweep. All of our keys at the game that we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, they're all coming true right here. It looks, sounds like we're on the coaching staff. As we said, <laughs> <laughs> the beefy defensive line for McCallum, what Glenn was going to have to do is they're going to try to get outside the tackles and break it out into the flat, and Thompson has been one of the huge ones that has done that already. So it'll be a 14-yard pickup on the play. This ball is now at the 38-yard line. Flag on the play. False start offense. They had to move. They had too many men on the field anyway. So five-yard penalty for the Grizzlies. First penalty, the second penalty of the game. It seems like the players were reading my mind. I was just about to say that this game has been played pretty clean throughout. Not many stoppages due to penalties. First and 15 from the 33. Snap, give is to Slade, who will bounce up the middle and get pushed back. They'll give him the 35-yard line forward progress. So a two-yard pickup for Slade as he was pushed down late in that one. Alvino Carabaje again, the junior. He's just been a menace in the middle of that line. He uh, didn't look like he heard the whistle. He kept wrestling, trying to get that ball out. McCallum obviously looking for a turnover. Second and 13 from the 35. Grizzlies need their own 48 to keep the drive going. Corn in motion. The give is to him. He's going to bounce out to the right side. He's going to cut up field. He's going to get to the 40, 45. And they will mark him out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a 10-yard pickup for Corin Thompson on the sweep to the right. Yeah, again, got outside the tackles. And you wonder with the field position, what coach is going to be thinking right here. They're spotted at the 45. They need to get to the 48. It looks like he's keeping the offense out there. 
10.20 left to go. Clock running. Give is again to Slade. He's going to try to push through. He's going to get met. He's going to get pushed back for a one-yard loss. It'll bring up a fourth and four for the Grizzlies. Nowhere to go for Slade on that one. Yeah, that's where that huge defensive line that we talked about at the top of the broadcast, that's where they showed up right there, especially yeah. in those short yardage situations where you're just trying to lean over and try to get a first down. They weren't able to do it. Glenn going for it on fourth down, fourth and four. They need the 48-yard line. Snap is high. They give. Swing out to Thompson. He's going to get a play. He's going to break a tackle. It's going to be where the spot is. And they'll give him the spot at the 49-yard line. A five-yard pickup for Corin Thompson on a great move there by the senior. And it's early in the game, so it's probably too early to be talking about huge plays. But that was a huge play Third and for five. Thompson. They able fourth to make and five. It fourth and five. Especially able to get through again. And it looks like him and Martin have done a really good job of evading these defensive backs to try to get inside. First and ten for the Grizzlies. Nichols is in motion. High snap. McGuire rolling out to the right looking for someone. He's looking down the field. And he is going to have Sam Martin for the first down at the 41-yard line. Looks like they're giving him. 39-yard line. If you're going to talk about any pass that McGuire has made so far this season, that was probably the most... That was probably the prettiest one that I've seen so far. Led him perfectly to the sideline. Gave him only one option to catch it. Seemed like there's a stoppage. It looks like the refs are conversing by something. Looks like they will have a talk about it. They're trying to move the ball back. So it looked like Thompson had, had excuse me, Martin had gotten to the 40 for the first down. It looks like they're moving. A 10 yard penalty on the Grizzlies. That's going to move them back all the way to their own 44 yard line. Wow, a costly penalty right there. Third penalty of the game for the Grizzlies. First and 15 on this one. McGuire rolls out, back to pass. Ball's wide as he was looking for Henderson. Ball just completely out of his hand. And Henderson, no chance at that one. An example of the play taking too long to develop, especially since Hatter was blocking downfield when the, he was the closest receiver. He wasn't even looking for the ball. It seemed like that was meant for Henderson here on the near side. So the play just took too long to develop, not able to get out of it. So you're trying to pick up good chunks right here. Penalty pushing this Grizzly team back into their own territory. Second and 15 as Nichols is in motion. They're going to give it to him. He's going to bounce out to the left, cut inside to the 45, get across midfield. He's out of bounds at the 47-yard line. So a nice pickup to get some of that yardage back as a nine-yard pickup for Nichols. It'll be interesting to see what the Grizzlies do right here, especially in such a peculiar field position. It looks They're all on their own side, but barely. It looks like they're on the 40 side, but they are in Knights territory. Third and six for the Grizzlies. They need the 41-yard line. 9:01 left in the second quarter. 14-7. Grizzlies leading it. Four wide receivers set for them. McGuire waiting for the snap. Shotgun rolls out to the left. He's looking downfield as he heaves that one high. He's looking for Henderson on the sideline. Couldn't yeah, we'll connect there. Wasn't to come. Lewis, who already has the touchdown for the Knights, he was in coverage for the Knights right there. And that's again one of those two-way players that we talked about where Glenn could possibly take advantage later in the game when they've been running run around both sides the entire game. But it was a good stop by Lewis right there. So they're going to punt the ball as Chase Dowden is going to punt this one for the Grizzlies. That penalty killed him. They had the first down for Sam Martin in night territory, and the penalty pushed them back and unable to convert here as Dowden is at his own 36 ready to punt. Kick is up. It's a high punt. And it is going to bounce and take a grizzly bounce. And it is going to be down inside the 25. It's going to roll to the 23-yard line. So nice punt there for Chase Dowden. And McCallum will take over at their own 23 with 8.44 left to go in the first half. Yeah, important for the defense right here to try to pick up, not to say the slack. You've already put up 14 points against a very good team. But when your offense seems like it's settled down and got off to that blazing start, and to go, they get off the defense, able to get off the field for the Knights. It's going to be important for this defense to try to counter that. Now, the way they've moved the ball, Glenn should have 21 or 28 points on the board right now. Uh, a couple of times they've shot themselves in the foot with some penalties. But this defense has carried them as the pass is outside to Stahlberry. He's going to get across the 30-yard line to about the 31. So an eight-yard pickup by him. Second and two for the Knights. Uh, Stahlberry, the feature receiver. It seems like every single play that... Davis has done and you said 14 attempts coming into the game he's already at 8 tonight 
And so the 15 game. attempts from McGuire. He's been <laughs> slinging it himself here tonight. So we might have a shootout here at Gupton Stadium. Second and two. Give is to Sutton. He's pushing through. Second effort. Not enough. It's going to be a yard short. Third and one for the Knights. Again, Sutton was able to bring that break that 33-yard run earlier to get the Knights in position for their first touchdown. But again, other than that, hasn't been able to find his way around the line and break open for the 65s, the 55s that we've seen him accustomed to over the first two games. So second and one for the Knights. They have balls at the 32-yard line. Davis out there making all sorts of adjustments. Four ride receivers is out. Shotgun snap. Guy passes in motion. They give it to Slade. He's going to run right up the middle, and they'll give him the first down as he gets to the 35-yard line. So a pickup of three. It'll be first and 10 from the 35. 7.32 left in the first. It's important for the Grizzlies to try to finish out the rest of this quarter, although it's only halfway over. It's important for them to try to finish strong and not let anything up, especially with how good McCallum's been at coming back. Davis back to pass. He's looking deep as he is going for Starberry. And he makes a play all the way inside of Grizzly territory at the 35-yard line. That's a 30-yard pass for Cole Davis. He must have heard us up here because he's still <laughs> <just going laughs> downfield. Yeah, he is. And it looks like it was a huge pass right there. It looks like he just, just went over the top of the cornerback, Isaac Armijo, for the Grizzlies. Big receiver Starberry has been coming up with some great plays for the Knights. First and 10, 6.52, clock running. And the give is to Davis. He's going to take it outside, break a tackle, get outside across the 30, all the way to the 27-yard line. So pick up of eight. Yeah, every single time Davis has called his own number, it seems like he's picked up a good chunk of yardage. He can move the ball. He's 6'2", almost 200 pounds, so he gets going. If you look at him on the field, he looks like, with that 15, looks like Tim Tebow out there. He's a big <laughs> body behind there. So he's going to have a timeout on the field. Official's timeout. Everything's okay. Grizzlies making some defensive substitutions. Eight carries for 37 yards so far for Sutton. And that was best case scenario if you are the Grizzlies coming Absolutely. into this game. That one big play, like you mentioned to me when the thing started. Saquon had that big run for the Giants last weekend. So <laughs> same thing for Sutton, that big run up the middle. As Davis is going to try to get through. He's wrapped up at his legs. He's at the 30, 31. Sorry, the 26. And he's not going to have enough for the first down. It's going to be third and about less than a yard to go that was lee pollock right there the leader what some would call the emotional leader what coach Schoenfield told us the emotional leader he's probably one of the most vocal guys out there so as you know what they say big time players make big time plays and that's a big time play right there and he had a he had a summer injury and they didn't think he was going to get ready to go for the season over and he's he's played all three games so obviously not 100 percent healthy but he's out there davis is going to try to take it himself as he's met by a swarm of grizzlies but he'll make the 20 four yard line for the first down Davis really squeezing for some extra yardage there yeah Daiku got into the backfield and looked like it was a good move that Davis put was able to put on him because Davis did make his move he got around the center for McCallum he did a good job getting into the backfield but it was a good move by Davis shaking him off and picking up the first down 518 clock running in the first half Grizzlies leading it 14 to 7 McCallum driving they have the ball to 24 yard line Davis, four wide receivers out. Sutton next him to the left. Left to right on your radio. Five minutes go. Deep pass. He's looking for Lewis in the end zone. Short. The ball bounces off his chest as Lewis unable to make the play there. Defended yeah. by Creel. Creel going out in coverage. Yeah, and cooling off a hot hand as Davis was four for four on his last four attempts and was able to finally put, try to put... A little bit of a stop to the hot hand that Davis has been riding for himself. He's been calling his own number, especially on the runs, but hasn't been scared to show off his arm. It's actually Isaac Amarillo in on the defense play there. So a couple substitutions on defense for the Grizzlies. Shotgun looking for McCallum. 
give us a sudden. We're going to run right into a wall of defenders and push forward to about the 20 21, to about a three yard pickup. Third and seven. Third and six. So they'll give him four. Yeah, this defensive line, as you saw, you went down there early. You saw that the line's on both sides of the ball for Glenn. They're smaller than McCallum, and they've been holding their own, especially some of the guys that are about two to three inches bigger and about 15 to 20 pounds heavier. Absolutely. Yeah, they've been running behind that left side for McCallum. The ball is out. Davis nowhere to go as he throws into traffic, and they're going to call Amarillo for a flag as that ball was thrown into traffic. And they're going to say Amarillo with the defensive penalty there. Ooh, you could have made a debate for a little bit of a tic-tac right there. It looked like he tipped the ball. And as you know, the rules, as soon as you touch the ball, you're able to hit him. It looked like he tipped off his hands. Maybe not from my vantage point. Maybe I don't have the best angle. But it looked like he ticked it enough. And that is when Amarillo came to make up to make the play. And it looks like that could be a costly penalty for the Grizzlies, especially when they're already on third down. Where they Pass interference, that's a fourth penalty for the Grizzlies in this one. And six in their first game, two last week. They're already at four so far in this one. Already touched up on it. Couldn't have 28 points right now if it wasn't for big penalties and a touch and interception in the red zone earlier. So first down for McCallum is to give it to Sutton. Actually, Davis is going to keep it and go outside himself. He's going to get inside the 10-yard line. He's all the way in. For a McCallum touchdown. They said he got in. 17 yard rushing touchdown for Cole Davis. And we're looking at almost a tie game here at Gupton. Yeah, from our vantage point, I thought he went down. I thought he was going to go out of bounds and try to reset. But Davis, persistent, and he was able to push through the secondary of Glenn and is able to get in for an end zone. Glenn defense wasn't able to come up with a stop there, and it looks like they really needed it. So on the two touchdown drives for McCallum, third and 17 they convert get a touchdown right here third and six they get a pass interference call and they get another touchdown those penalties those third down penalties are really killing Glenn in this one it looks like coach Gammerdinger will take a timeout on the PAT maybe an opportunity maybe an opportunity to go from two if he feels confident in his offense especially with how they've moved especially on the last drive well De La Garza who was injured on the last point after touchdown he's not back out there Limon is still out there to kick again so Garza is probably injured and just hoping he's okay long term. But uh, they're gonna obviously change their strategy if he's not out there to kick the extra points and field goals. Especially in a tight game like this, it can go down to a kick or a miss kick for that matter. Yeah, when Glenn offense gets back out onto the field with 4:07 left to go in the second, you want to try to bleed as much time and looking for one of those drives, the first two drives, that balanced offense where he looks like a, a little dip and dunk for McGuire and a little run for Slade and you know. Those little bits and pieces that were meshing together really well and not leave them any time to try to come back into this game. As they already are, they've fought their way back. So Limon, a left-footed kicker, getting ready to tie this one up. Here's the snap. The hold is down. The kick is just good. It just got over the uprights. It was like a line drive kick. It looked like a Glenn defender might have got their hand on it, but it just sneaks over. The goalpost in, and we have a tie game with 4.07 left in the first half. Alex Peta, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega with you on this Thursday Night Football with KMAC. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. From West Texas all the way to the Bayou and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. This is the KMAC Sports Network, bringing your teams to you. Bike Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. This is the KMAC Sports Network. High score here at Gupton Stadium in Cedar Park, Texas. Glenn Grizzlies 14, the McCallum Knights 14, 407 left in the first half as Limon is set to kick from the 40. Line drive kick, and Henderson's going to finally pick it up at the 15. He's going to get to the 25, get outside, and brought down at the 20, 29 yard line. 
Zach Napier is a special teams tackler, the junior wide receiver and defensive back for the Knights. So we we talked about it. Glenn got out to the early lead. We saw that ha it's been a trend for the Knights. The Knights have been able to come back from these, and they've never really seems like they have been getting better as the game has worn on. So halftime will be useful for the Grizzlies, but trying to tack on a couple extra points. McCallum will receive the kick to start the third quarter. So let's see if Glenn can have a nice drive, drain this clock down, and go into the half. 403 left. Motion. Nichols breaking a tackle, and he's brought down for a loss. Three-yard loss for Shamir Nichols as he tries to get outside. And not a good play there. Yeah, uh, Joseph Limon, the the kicking star so far for <laughs> for the Knights, <laughs> made his tackle right there in the backfield. And then Grizzlies have to do something to try to get the offense going and get the momentum back on their side and try to get their crowd back into it as well. We'll get the ball to Nate Hatter if they can. Second and 13, Stubblefield in motion. McGuire going to roll out, and they're going to say a false start by Glenn. Another penalty. And this is going to push them back. Second and 18. And it looks like that penalty was on so far the offensive start of the day, Jarvis Henderson. So fifth penalty of the game for the Grizzlies in the first half. Always a little frustrating when it's the outside guys making it instead of the offensive line. Second and 18 for the 21. Grizzlies need their own 39. Stubblefield in motion right to left. Fake to give. McGuire back to pass. He's going to find Martin. He's going to get out to about the 25-yard line. Sam Martin makes the play. And on that tackle, yard pickup. And on that tackle for McCallum was Anthony Morris, the senior defensive back. So it looks like Glenn is going back to what they've been doing, but it looks like McCallum has made the adjustment. So those small passes into the flat and dumping it off haven't seemed to be picking up the big yards as it was earlier in the game. Third and long here, third and 14. Ball at the 25. Wire back to pass. He's looking downfield and is caught. What a play there for Corin Thompson as he gets out to the 35-yard line. What a play right there by McGuire. 45-yard line, a 20-yard pass, excuse me. Again, McGuire staying in the pocket. That's so important, especially you don't see it very often for high school quarterbacks. Having the confidence in his offensive line and the confidence in himself to stay in the pocket and possibly take a hit. He did a great job staying in there and delivering the ball. A huge play right there to Corin Thompson. First catch of the day for Thompson. Sixth catch on the season. First and ten from the 45. Slade will run outside. He'll get to about the 47-yard line. So two-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. Second and eight for the Grizzlies. And yeah, the Grizzlies really want to ride that momentum, especially on a huge play like that. And maybe if you could point out a weakness for McCallum at the top of the we talked about it right before we went on air is, is the defense. The defense has a large has allowed over 300 yards a game, and the secondary is probably the place where you want to attack. Let's see what they do. Less than two minutes as they're going to give it to Morris. He's going to run outside, turn up field. He's going to cross midfield, and he gets all the way to the 45-yard line of McCallum. So an eight-yard pickup, and it's right at the line of scrimmage. They are going to move the chain. So an eight-yard pickup for Morris and a first down for the Grizzlies. Underrated play there by Lamont Slade, who was the running back who is in charge of blocking the linebacker right there for McCallum. He did a good job allowing him to get outside for an extra three or four yards, which is huge, especially every yard counts. Minute 30, clock running. 14 all. Give it to Slade. He's going to wait, turn up field to the 40. Cross the 40 to the 35. He is inside the 35, down at the 32. A 13-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. Like you said, rewarded him for that big block. Give him the ball. Yeah, I, lo I love what Slade does. He gets in between the tackles probably just as good as anybody on Glenn's roster. Just when it seems like the middle is clogged up, he finds a way to get around a tackle and tries to take everybody with him. I love the way he runs. Moving everybody to the right side. Two backs in the field. Two wide receivers outright. Fake to give to Slade. McGuire is out to pass. Nate Hatter all by himself. And he drops the ball at the 14-yard line. Nate Hatter wide open in the flat drops the ball I mean if you're Glenn that's the one thing you wanted you want Hatter especially close to the end zone to try to make a play and it was especially where we see him all game in the middle of the field where McCallan didn't pick him up that's the second time that McCallan has failed to pick up Hatter where he was wide open by himself if he catches that ball probably 95 percent chance he's able to squeak into the end zone second and ten for the 32 a minute and one left Take the handoff. McGuire back to pass. He's looking downfield. 
She's got Sam Martin who breaks a tackle inside the 15, inside the 10. And they're going to mark him at the 8-yard line. So a 24-yard pickup for Sam Martin. Hold on here. There's a flag here on the back side of the play. Tried to throw her near the 23-yard line. These penalties could be killing Glenn. There's Coach Schoenfield's out there arguing his case. And we're still waiting for the call. If it stands, a 24-yard pickup for Sam Martin and a first down for the Grizzlies. As we await the call. And looks like it will go against Glenn. Referee's pointing towards the bright orange, trying to let the McCallum side know. And they are going to move the ball back now. Killer, 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 killer. A 10-yard penalty. 15-yard penalty. I think they're going to call a personal foul on somebody or a face mask. They're moving this ball back 15 yards all the way back to the 47-yard line. Another costly penalty for Glenn. We're going to have to see what that was during halftime because it didn't look like anything possible could have been thrown, especially on the backside of a play. Second and 25 from the 47. Thompson in motion. Wire back to pass. Looking downfield. Flushed out of the pocket. He's throwing deep. He's, he's got Corin Thompson in a jump ball. Unable to bring it in at the 15-yard line. Heavy traffic, but Thompson unable to bring that one down. Yeah, Third and 25 coming up. Uh, traffic was cur courtesy of Gabe Williams, who we've said all night. He's been in charge of him. And again, the 50-50 ball, McGuire trusted his receiver, and he nearly came up with it, but just too much traffic. And again, that penalty looks like it'll be costly. 44 seconds here left to go in the second quarter. Third and 25 from the 47-yard line. You need the McCallum 28. Break the handoff. McGuire back to pass. Pressure flushed out of the pocket. He's looking to throw. He's got nowhere to go. As he's going to get all the way down to the 43-yard line. So a pickup of about four. That'll bring up fourth and long. Yeah, tackled by probably the most intimidating name we've ever heard, Ryan Bonesteel, the linebacker for McCallum. 23 seconds to go, fourth down, and it'll be interesting to see what Glenn's strategy is here. Might let it try to run out. 36 seconds left on the game clock and 15 left. 30, excuse me, 36 left on the play clock and 12 left on the game clock. They'll probably call a timeout and then save it for one last heave as a half as the clock's going to roll all the way down. And looks like they're going to call a timeout. I know they're going to let the clock run out, and they're going to go into the half with the score tied at 14. So another costly penalty after the big play to Sam Martin leaves this drive out of stall. McCallum will receive the third quarter kickoff to lead things off in the second half. It is 14-14. Grizzlies and Knights all tied up on the KMAC Sports Vite Media Network. The KMAC Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right, three KMAC Sports campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAC Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAC sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Jace Andrews, Blake Herrera, and EJ Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to enter and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us, info at kmaxsports.com. The KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game.
Do you love the game of football, wish you could be part of the action? Then become a football official. The Austin Football Officials Association is actively seeking new members to officiate games all across Central Texas. The Austin Football Chapter of TASO, the Texas Association of Sports Officials, provides a two-year training program for new members. Taught by a crew of veteran officials, these training classes meet each Monday night from July through November and include classroom and on-field instruction. You don't need to be an expert player or a coach to become a great official and have a memorable officiating career. As our officials will tell you, working around student athletes at all levels of football is gratifying. Plus, you'll develop lifelong friendships with other officials who share your passion for the game. Officiating football is a great way to get into and stay in shape, be a positive role model for student athletes, retain your competitive edge, and earn additional income. Visit the Austin Football Officials Association online at afoa.ws for more information. That's afoa.ws. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Halftime here at Gupton Stadium in Cedar Park, Texas. <laughs> I almost said New York, still uh, <laughs> working on that. Uh, we're about, about less than 26 minutes as we will have the McCallum Band on the field right now doing their performance. Then we'll have your Glenn Grizzlies uh, to close out halftime, and we'll have that for you in a couple of minutes. Uh, Alan Spader, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega with you on the halftime show. All tied up at 14 in this one. Started off great for Glenn. They came out to a 14 nothing lead. A couple of drives stalled. And the first thing you look at, two, how they defended on third down and how they uh, had six penalties in the first half. Just not a good first half on the on the mental penalty side. side and on the mental side for the Grizzlies. Yeah, again, we talked about it. You said it a couple times, shooting themselves in the foot. A couple of times we we keep saying it, they could be up 20, 21. They should be in the 20s right here with the offense and how well they've performed. They just haven't been able to capitalize on a couple of drives. And it looked like right there at the end of the half that they were able to be able to capitalize and maybe get a field goal, if anything. Not able to do a huge penalty. It looks like it was a personal foul. We'll try to get more word on what the penalty was. But, again, an interception too, an errant throw by McGuire, probably the only blemish on his record tonight. He's been slinging it around, doing a good job, trying to get it out to his receivers. But, again, costly penalties, especially in third-down situations on both sides of the ball, defense and offense. Yeah, and then you also look at, again, giving up the third and 17, the big play to Starberry. Then you give up a third and six pass interference by uh, Amio. And then Nate Hatter, wide open inside the 15-yard line, dropped the ball. So a lot of mental mistakes going on for Glenn. They should be leading this game by about two touchdowns. Uh, they put up 231 yards of offense so far in the first half. Drew McGuire, 7 for 19. Not the best completion percentage, but he's been able to make throws when he needs to. 122 yards. Uh, two big plays were taken away by penalties. The 24-yard pass to Sam Martin. And then there was another big pass to Corn Martin as well. Uh, Corn Thompson, excuse me, as well. Uh, for rushing, seven yards, seven carries, 33 yards for Julian Morris and a touchdown. Five rushes, 20 yards for Lamont Slade. Five rushes for 45 yards for Corin Thompson. Shamir Nichols, three rushes, seven yards. Drew McGuire, one yard, one rush, four yards. So 109 yards on the ground for this team. But again, six penalties, a big drop pass. That's where we are right now, and that's why we're tied so far in this one. Yeah, for on the McCallum side of the ball, Glenn is doing exactly what they wanted to do coming into this game. You wanted to take it out of Sutton's hands, and you wanted to put it into Davis' hands. No disrespect to Davis, but Davis only came into this game with 14 attempts on the season. He already has 10 coming into here, but what he's been able to do is make plays with his feet. Six carries for 35 yards for a 5.8 average, and coming mm -hmm. from a quarterback, that's especially hard to stop when you have a big playmaker like Sutton, but... Coming into this game at the top of the broadcast, we said the key to the Glenn defense was stopping Sutton. And nine rushes for 38 yards, hardly, you know, shut down, not exactly locked down. And but the majority of those yards came on one carry, so he was averaging less than a yard skewed. of a carry. Exactly. Uh, the big play, I look at Slade putting the ball on the ground, Glenn able to recover that, weren't able to score on that play. So that was tough when they weren't able to convert on the on the penalty. Well, did they? It's one drive that they didn't convert on, on on good field position. We'll have to go back and look at that. But then the interception by McGuire as well. So each team with the turnover. But again, six penalties is a story for Glenn, and that's probably going to be the message that Coach Sowenfield and the assistant coaches have. We cannot keep shooting ourselves in the foot. Guys are making plays. We're seeing Sam Martin get involved and do some great things out there after, uh, you know, 
after the catch. He's breaking tackles and moving around, and you know, stuff's getting called back. The last thing you want to do is see yellow flags on the field and, 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 and the game just turning into the referees. Yeah, again, and you came into this game with the game plan on both sides of the ball. On the offensive side, you wanted to be able to get off to a good start, and you wanted to maintain the movement. Although a couple of stalled drive, they've been able to do that for the most part on the offensive side. I mean, you just read a couple of stats that proves that. And on the defensive side of the ball, what you wanted to do was take away their best weapon. I mean, and you've done it. Only 73 yards on the ground with the team that is more than capable of putting up at least 100 on you. By the, end, by the end of the first half. And to hold them to 78 is an accomplishment in itself. But, I mean, obviously, you've played. it's unfortunate when you've played this hard and you're not able to go into the halftime with a lead. Absolutely. If you look on offense, they have 11 plays of 10 yards and more. Of more. Corin Thompson averaging 9 yards a carry. They're going to have to get him more involved in the second half. They kind of got away with that towards the end of the second quarter. And they were trying to throw a little bit. Um, and, and understandably so, you got some great playmakers on the outside. But you know, Corin Thompson, a 12-yard run, a 13-yard run. Then he lost a yard, but then he came back with 11, and then another 10. So I want to see him get going. Julian Morris is always good. Uh, it's funny because Slade is a smaller back, but he can run up the middle, and Thomas is the bigger back, and he runs to the outside uh, and gets going. But you know, 122 yards passing for Drew McGuire. So they're on pace, on pace for a 250-yard game. Again. The drop by had or the penalty by Morris. He could easily have 100, 170, 180 yards and a couple touchdowns in this one. Uh, but nonetheless, it's tied 14-14. It's pretty much 0-0. You go on into the second half. Uh, that defense, you know, they were a little bit more winded towards the end of the second quarter. Uh, they're going to get a little bit of rest now. Uh, they got to come out the same way they came out to start the game and have a quick three and out and get those guys off the field because, uh, you know, they're going to go to Sutton. He's going to try to get hot. You got to try to knock him down as much as you can. Yeah, you want to get back to what we saw from Glenn earlier in the game. I mean, we commented after after the huge special teams tackle by Townsley is that that team was firing on all cylinders. The offense was doing its thing. The defense flying around making plays. The special teams not allowing the field position game to be flipped on them. I mean, this team, really, if you look at it, Glenn has outplayed McCallum, at least in my opinion. They Absolutely. have outplayed him, on all, at least on, on both sides of the ball, on offense and defense. And to outplay them... I mean, if you're McCallum, you're counting your lucky stars. It's a tie game. Obviously, they've earned it. They've taken advantage. That's probably the difference right now is McCallum has taken advantage of those opportunities that Glenn has given them, even though they're not necessary. Uh, the other thing I'm going to look for, I'm going to look to see if Trinidad De La Garza comes back in the game as their kicker. And, you know, Limon is capable. He's, he got the extra point down. And then he had a couple of decent kickoffs there, line drive, forcing Glenn to pick up a ball and a bounce and make a run. But this game comes down later. We haven't seen either team attempt a field goal, and they've both been in range. But, uh, again, having your backup kicker out there, field position, punting, and things of that nature, uh, that's going to be something to watch to see if De La Garza comes in. And if he doesn't, that's definitely an advantage for Glenn. Yeah, something else that you have to watch is that I've, keep, I've alluded to it a couple of times over the course of this game, but – the work of Darius Lewis and Cole Davis, two of the playmakers on the offensive side for the Knights, they do play both ways, Slay in the defensive backfield and linebacker for Davis. And we haven't seen any signs of it in the previous games, unfortunately, if you're Glenn. You haven't seen any signs of them slowing down. If anything, you've seen in the second half, McCallum really dominate their opponents and really get better as the game wore on. On the defensive side of the ball, they didn't allow a point last week against Lehman. Lehman looks like they laid, laid down a little bit during the second half, mm -hmm. and they just came back from it. And unfortunately for Glenn, they let you when your opponent is down, the key to it is you're trying to st put your pedal to the metal and you have to keep forcing it down and force them to try to make something miraculous happen. And you weren't able to do that. You let them hang around. You let them think that they're in the game and they are in the game. I mean, it's 0-0 zero, zero basically going into the second half. Absolutely. So, a uh, quick mention of our sponsors, Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant. Come to Los Reyes seven times, pick up a card, and get a free lunch after your seventh visit. So go to Los Reyes Mexican, Mexican Restaurant on 251 Bell Boulevard in Cedar Park, Texas. EJ, they got the best happy hour in Cedar Park. They start at 2 o'clock. You're having a late lunch, a working lunch, an early happy hour, 2 o'clock to 6 p.m. Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant in Bell Boulevard in Cedar Park, Texas. Visit the website at LosReyesTexas.com. And as always, keep up with, to, with the Grizzlies. The schedule, Coach Schoenfeld's weekly message, everything that you need to have for the Grizzlies for game day, for practices, you know, everything. GlennFootball.com. 
Alan Cepeda, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega with you. Uh, McCallum Band finishing up a little bit. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Hopefully we have the Glenn Grizzly Band as they're getting ready to come on the field and give you a wonderful show to end the half. In Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. Bite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the state capital. If it was full of sports. I mean, the rotunda is more than large enough for basketball or volleyball. And let's face it, anything we do in there is going to be better than what's going on right now. Plus, those guys only work every two years. We bring your teams to you every doggone day. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Back live from Cedar Park here at Gupton Stadium. 15 minutes left in halftime as the McCallum Band is wrapping up. We understand we have some, some listeners checking us out. If you have any questions, please tweet at us. Tweet at me, Cepeda, C-E-P-E-D-A-M-L-B, at Twitter. Send us your questions, your comments. We'd love to, to hear what you have to say about these Grizzlies. 14-14 as they're headed off into the into the third quarter Again, I'm looking for Corin Thompson to get involved, and I'm looking for Noah Holmes and, and, and Alec Townsley, these safeties, to come up in this box and make a play. Sun put the ball on the ground already. Let's see if he can put it down on the ground for them again, get a short field. But I'm looking for a quick three-and-out play, a bend-don't-break situation for the defense, get this offense back rolling uh, and see if we can make some big plays and uh, you know cut the penalties out. Six is a lot. They had six in the entire game in week one, two last week. They already had six now in the first half so yeah. really costly penalties if they can clean that up get Thompson more involved I think they're gonna win this game yeah the two guys that I'm looking more are the two guys that have made pretty big stops so far and that's Brian Creel the captain for this week and League Pollock those are the two linebackers for the Grizzlies and they are they've played an instrumental part in trying to stop this rushing attack and they've done a really good job holding Jalen Sutton to so far his low for a half and it looks like we are gonna be able to take you out Absolutely. So we have the Glenn Grizzlies, their awesome, wonderful band as they are getting on the field to perform their halftime. So we invite you to enjoy this lesson for the next 10 to 15 minutes as we get ready for the second half. Here's your Glenn Grizzly marching band. Oh, my God. 
This is Kevin McAdams. You know, from the McAdams Company Creative, we love to make commercials. Let us make yours. Yep, that's me. While my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful, I've been given to understand that every once in a while, y'all might want to hear somebody different. So I went out and recruited some guys. So first, I'd like to introduce Blake. Good afternoon. My name's Blake Herrera, and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane. This guy over here, this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. True story. When I was in college, girls used to love it when I read their textbooks to them. And I'm Kevin, and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491, or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with The McAdams Company Creative. No longer working alone. I love to make commercials. Let me make yours. The KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right. Three KMAX Sports Campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Jace Andrews, Blake Herrera, and EJ Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to enter and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us, info at kmaxsports.com. The KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, a minute left to go here at halftime. Al Spader, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Baker ready here on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network, ready to get you going for the second half. All knotted up, 14 apiece, as McCallum will be receiving the third quarter kickoff to start things off here. Glenn defense, hopefully they're rested. Their kickoff coverage team, they're hyped up. They're on the field, jumping up and down. Uh, hopefully they can you know, make a big play here. Yeah, special teams has been a factor in this game. They haven't let especially Jalen Sutton get outside or try to make a big return. We saw last week that Sutton was able to open it up with a 98-yard kickoff return to open up that game against Lamb in a game the Knights would go on to win 40-27. to but He's back there right now with Tino DePaz. So it'll be DePaz on the left and Sutton on your right. Glenn will be kicking off right to left on your radio. As Pedro Soto set to kick off from the 40, whistle goes. Kick is up. And ball is going to be fielded by DePaz at the 16-yard line. He's going to run it out and get across coverage all the way to the 40. Across midfield. There he goes. 30, 35. All the way down, and he is tackled at the two-yard line. What a return by DePaz all the way to the two-yard line. Yes. Worst-case scenario for Glenn. 
Yeah, and as soon as I saw it going to DePause, I was going to make a comment that they're going to avoid the playmaking abilities of Jalen Sutton. But DePause doing his part right there. Just broke open in the middle. Looked like a hole was... Saw a hole you could drive a truck through. I mean, there was nothing that Glenn could do to stop DePause right there. And a huge return. And the defense notes room to work with on that side of the ball. So they're going to have to try to come up with a huge play. Maybe a turnover. An 81-yard return by Tino DePaz. You mentioned last week an 88-yard return. For Sutton, 81 yards, setting them right in position to score to set things off here in the third quarter. Snap, give it to Sutton. He's going to run up the middle, and he's going to be stopped short. It looks like they're going to stop him short inside the one, so it'll be a second and goal from inside the one. Again, the defense doing its job. I mean, you're holding this dynamic playmaker to less than five yards of carry, and that's the game you wanted to play coming into this. Again, Tino DePaz, 81-yard kickoff to start things off here. Second and one to give again is to Davis. He's going to take it himself. He's going to fight through and stand up in the end zone as he was met by two Grizzlies defenders. But again, 6'2", 200 pounds is Davis. He pushes his way through, and he's in for a one-yard score. Now, if you're going to take anything positive from, if you can even barely call it a drive, I mean, two plays both on the ground. If you're going to take anything away from this, it's how well Glenn was able to get into the backfield of McCallum. But unfortunately, the pause's return is a little too much for the defense, you know, to try to recover from. 20 to 14, and pending the extra point. That's the last thing you want to see, an 81-yard kickoff return. He ran it right up the gut of that special teams unit for... It clanks off the left upright. Again, Limon, the backup kicker, kicking from the left side off of the left post. Costly right there. Again, we rethink maybe Coach Hammerdinger, Gammerdinger, sorry, was maybe rethinking his strategy. Had the confidence. Lamone made the first one, but barely snuck it into the left corner of the upright. But he does clink it, so it does remain 2014 Knights. So let's see if that point comes back to hurt him. Again, you're missing the extra point there. And we saw that happen to Anderson in the opener for McCallum. They missed an extra point. McCallum ended up winning that game 21-20, to so something we'll keep an eye on for. And most likely, we'll probably see McCallum attempt a two-point conversion if it gets to that at this point. So... It's going to be Martin and Henderson back to receive for the Grizzlies as Limon will set to kick off. Two touchdowns already on the ground for Davis. I mean, you expected the touchdowns on the ground, and you weren't expecting them through the air, but he has contributed through the air. Looks like they'll be lined up at the 40-yard line with Limon kicking again. Twenty fourteen McCallum leads it. Limon left footed kicker. Another bouncing kick, and someone's gonna have to get to it quickly as Creel picks it up, and he is gonna get out to about the thirty eight yard line. So good field position to get things going for the Grizzlies. There'll be eleven thirteen left in the third quarter, and they will take over at the thirty eight yard line. Hey, last time they had this field position coming into a new half, they were able to put some points on the board. They actually put seven up on the board last time this situation, so we're hoping history repeats itself here for the Grizzlies. Snap give is to the outside. It's going to get all the way to about the 46-yard line. So that's an eight-yard pickup for Lamont Slade as he gets outside. It'll be second and short for the Grizzlies to the 45, so a seven-yard pickup for Slade. And you're looking for an explosive play, and Lamont Slade was able to provide it in between the tackles. Rushes it again up the middle. He bruises through all the way across midfield. They're going to put him at the 49-yard line there. So... Six-yard pickup for Slade. Who knows? Maybe a halftime adjustment for Coach Schoenfield is making, maybe making Lamont Slade a more key part of the offense. Glenn hurrying up to the line. Slade will remain in that backfield. They give us to him again. He's going to push, get met immediately by a defender, but he's going to get out to about the 46-yard line they'll give him. So a three-yard pickup for, nice. for Slade. Immediately met by August McCollum of McCallum. <laughs> Say the that junior two linebacker. Times. The junior linebacker. But some issues going on with the scoreboard. They have it at third and eleven, but it's about a third and six, third and seven for the Grizzlies. Nichols in motion. They fake the gift to him. Thompson's gonna get on the outside. He finds a crease, and he's gonna get met. And maybe 
A two-yard gain for Thompson. It's great coverage there on the defense. Yeah, Zach Napier sniffed that out from the, from the get-go right there. Never was really fooled by the fake that the Grizzlies tried to pull on the right side. They tried to go far side, ended up coming near side. Third down and five for the Grizzlies. Ball's at the 44. They need the 35-yard line. Thompson in that backfield now. They fake the give to him. McGuire throws. Ball's batted down the line of scrimmage. Batted down by... That's number 64. Don't have a number 64 on my That's roster. 54 then. That's Boggs. Connor Boggs on the play. Boggs he had that interception as well, so he's causing havoc on defense. Making a case for defensive MVP for the Knights. A couple of offensive linemen switching out, and they're going to... They are going to punt, actually, so they will punt. As Dowden is back at his own 40, ready to punt. Jacob Trim is the long snapper. Snap is good. Dowden kicks this one. This is a really good kick. Is this going to get down? Take a McCallum bounce. And it's picked up at the 24-yard line by Alec Townsley. Now, unfortunately for the offense, wasn't able to get start moving the ball. And at least the silver line for this one, this one wasn't cut short by a penalty. And they, and they play the field position game. Push them back at the 24-yard line, make them earn it again. You start your drive at the three-yard line. No wonder why McCallum scored the last drive. But this time, they punt, took a McCallum bounce, and Townsley was quickly able to grab it and down it at the 24. But they're going to have a long way to go on this one. Yeah, they're not going to be able to do give two handoffs and have to get three yards in order to try to get into the end zone. They have a lot more field that they have to cover. Davis in the backfield. He'll give to Sutton, who'll look to go up the middle, and he's met immediately by a slew of defenders led by Callan Guyton and Matthew Hester. I was say Matthew Hester has made a couple of plays over the last couple of weeks that really tried to stifle some of the run games of McCallum and Liberty Hill as well as uh, McNeil. So they give about a yard on the play. It'll be second and nine. Ball's ahead of the 25, but not at the 26. So it'll be a second and nine. McCallum putting an extra defender in the box here, looking to possibly bring pressure. Two linebackers out, and Davis keeps it. He's going to break outside, and he is met immediately by Petey Cervantes, who's having himself a nice little game. Mm -hmm. So a pickup of about three. The ball's going to be marked at the 20, just shy of the 28. So third and six coming up for McCallum, as now we'll see. Cruz Escobar and Darius Lewis split out wide to the right. Sutton's in the backfield with Davis, who's staring in at the sideline to get the new play. He's yelling it out to his receivers. Lewis is here on the near side. Two sideline. to the right, two to the left. Third and six. Davis back to pass. Here comes pressure. Pollock can't come up with him. Rolling Davis out. He's going to take it and throw it out of bounds. So what pressure brought by Petey Cervantes, Lee Pollock, and Jeff Francis Daiku as they rolled Davis out of, almost out of bounds. He was going to take a mm -hmm. big loss there, but he was just able to get that ball off. It'll bring a fourth down. Petey Cervantes having a whale of a football game so far, and it was huge for that defense to force the three and out and get their offense back the ball. And you see the returner for Glenn is positioned at about the 43 on their own side, Allen. So now you're starting to see what we were talking about, the field position game. Give Glenn a shorter field to work with. Limon will kick from his 12-yard line. Snap is high. They get pressure. It's a line drive kick. Sam Martin's not going to take it. And that's a tough one there. That's going to roll all the way to the 17-yard line. Sam Martin could have possibly picked that up on one bounce, but he instead decides to let it roll back, and he is getting met immediately by the coaches on the sideline. It's a tough mental mistake there by Martin. Yeah, it turns in what could have been a big return. turns into a 50-plus-yard punt for Limon and Limon didn't have a lot of height on his it was a straight line drive and it just rolled all the way down the sideline you thought Martin had a chance to return it but unfortunately now you do lose that field position game as they're starting from their own 16 17 the 17 yard line so he punted the ball <laughs> from his own 17 so that's incredible what a punt there and a change of field position Three wide receivers for the Grizzlies. Shotgun snap McGuire he'll give to Morris who's going to look to get across the middle he's going to get across the 20 and they're going to give him the 22-yard line, so a pickup of five for Julian Morris. Boggs again in on the tackle for McCallum. 
It looks like someone's got to come off. So Slade's going to come in, and Morris is going to kind of limp off a little bit. That's the last thing Glenn wants to see, especially from one of their stronger backs. Henderson and Martin out wide left for the Grizzlies. Two running backs in the backfield. Snap, give. Thompson, nowhere to go. Looking, finds a hole, gets across the 30s. Met, still on his feet. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line. They'll give him the 25 and a half, so a pick up a three, a tough three there for Corin Thompson. Yeah, he ran with such power on that last one. Darius Lewis was trying to meet him, and he said, no, sir, and he just fell flat on his back. Unfortunately, we do have another injured knight on the far side of the field, and that is Joseph Limon. He is clutching his knee. So, unfortunate for McCallum. And you may have to, if he is out for an extended, it looks like, ow, she is wincing in pain near the 21-yard line. It's unfortunate for McCallum. But, again, we talked about already you're behind on a kicker. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, Moan is down for McCallum. We're going to take an injury timeout here on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. You know, from the McAdams Company Creative, we love to make commercials. Let us make yours. Yep, that's me. While my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful, I've been given to understand that every once in a while, y'all might want to hear somebody different. So I went out and recruited some guys. So first, I'd like to introduce Blake. Good afternoon. My name's Blake Herrera, and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane. And this guy over here, this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. True story. When I was in college, girls used to love it when I read their textbooks to them. And I'm Kevin, and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491, or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with the McAdams Company Creative. This is the KMAX Sports Network. 651 in the third quarter. McCallum leading it 20 to 14 over the Grizzlies, who are looking at a third and one. As they give it to Slade, he's going to barrel through, and he's going to get all the way across the 30-yard line for a first down. They'll give him the 31, a five-yard first down pickup for Lamont Slade. Lamont Slade becoming the bell cow back in this game. Seems like it's been a different guy every game. Last week it was Morris. This week it looks like it's Slade, and that's the benefit of having three, three or four guys in your backfield that can carry the load for multiple plays. Nine carries, 41 yards for Slade. In this one, balls at the 31, first and 10, 6.24, clock running in the third quarter. Thompson in motion. Snap, fake the give to him. They're going to run on the outside, and that's red all the way completely, and he is pushed out of bounds by number 19 leading the way, Cody. It's not Cody Bagwell. That is. Looks like he's pushed out around the 27-yard line. So it looks like a I'll loss of four. back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a loss of about four. So a loss of four for Slade. Your goal is to try to get a good chunk of yardage on this play. Absolutely. Second and 14 from the 27. They put Nichols in motion. He looked in for a screen pass. Going to get past one defender. Get outside to the 30. 35 40. And he is brought out of bounds. They'll say at the 39 yard line. So a great play, like you mentioned. They needed that. 12 yards they pick up on yeah. second down. Ryan Bonesteel read it all the way, but he had too much speed and got around the outside, and Bonesteel had nothing to do but try to chase him, and he set the corner. That was so important on that run, setting the corner and able to plant and get up field. And he did a good job right there. First completed pass in the first half for the Grizzlies. Third and two in the 39. They need the 41-yard line. Slade in the backfield to give it to him. He's going to go outside. He's going to cross the 40 to 45, get almost to midfield. As they will mark him out of bounds at the Grizzly 48-yard line. So a nine-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. Great block on the far side by Jarvis Henderson. Already having a good game receiving the ball and doing his part as a two-way receiver blocking downfield. As you mentioned, Slade, 11 carries so far in this one. He's definitely pacing the Grizzlies. Martin split out wide to the left. Three wide receivers to the right, including Nate Hatter. Bring Thompson in motion. They'll give it to him. Misses the tackle, gets across midfield, turns a what could have been a big loss, gets all the way out to the 49-yard line. So it picks up an impressive two, <laughs> two yards, but <laughs> it could have been a lot worse than that. Yeah, you could you got to take it how it is. And Corn Thompson did a good job of shaking off uh, Tino DePaz, who just took back that kickoff return for a good yardage. 
did a good job of outpacing him and was able to shake him off while he was on his heels. Ball on the night, 49. They need the 46 of the first down. High snap. The give is to Slade, and he's going to push forward. I'm going to mark him short. They're going to mark him. It'll be a first down, but I thought he got across the 40. They'll mark him at about the 40 and a half. It seems like the near side line judge told him to move the change on the far side, said to keep it there. But nonetheless, first and 10 here for the Grizzlies. Absolutely. Do signal first down, so three yard pickup. 12 carries, 49 yards for Slade as he remains in the backfield. Got to look out, make sure everything's okay with Morris. Fake the give to Thompson. He's going to break outside to the 40. Upfield to about the 36 yard line they'll give him. So, a four yard pickup for Corin Thompson. Grizzly starting to move here. We've alluded to it before. In between the tackles is really difficult with how much weight you have in the middle, but downfield blocking by these receivers is of huge importance, and especially, again, Henderson seemed like a one-handed block on that last one there on the near sideline. Second and six for the Grizzlies. They need the 30-yard line for first. Snap. Thompson up the middle. Breaks the tackle. Spins. But he is wrapped up by number three, Elijah Griffin. So he was injured earlier in the game. Nice to see him bounce back in this one. Yeah, it was great to see him bounce back. You never want to see anybody go down. If you're going to beat a team, you want them to beat them at their best. So it's good to see Elijah Griffin in there. Him and Gabe Williams have had a good day being able to make some open field tackles against some of these receivers for Glenn. A one-yard pickup on the play. It'll be third and five from the 35. 437 and counting. McCallum calls a timeout. Yeah, was McCallum's going to call a timeout here and get right defensively as Glenn's starting to push the ball, get them back on their heels. Yeah, almost a respect timeout coming from the McCallum bench as the offense has kept moving and the defense really hasn't had a chance to catch their breath or get a sense of Glenn's offensive strategy here to go with the second quarter. So, you know, a well-earned timeout, as you can say, for Glenn. They don't have to waste it. As you see as we're on a uh, timeout here, Joseph Limon is doing some shuffles and side sprints, so he looks like he'll probably bounce back into this ball game as he puts his helmet on, and we'll see if he'll come out to play defense. Either way, he's back in the game. Uh, we haven't seen anything that we actually do see. Number 14, Trinidad De La Garza on the sideline. He's taking off his shoulder pad, so he's out of this game uh, for good. So we hope it's not a serious injury. Hopefully just out for this game for McCallum. So uh, the second string kicker, Limon, is... Looks like he's going to come back into the ball game. Yeah, Glenn needs to keep up. Good timeout. For Big down for Glenn. Third and five. Give us the slate. He's going to bounce outside. He's going to push his way. And he's going to get all the way to the 31-yard line, a four-yard pickup. And that was a great job there by Gabe Williams to wrap him up and pull him down because Slade was on his way to a first down. And forced them to force Coach Schoenfield on a fourth down play. It looks They're looking to the sideline. Looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field, though. You know, I, I mean, obviously with those two big nose tackles up front, but I just love seeing New England and Tom Brady. They rush up to that line, get that, that, that quarterback sneak off, and it works every single time. Mm -hmm. Fourth and one. Let's see if they get it. They give us to Slade. He's across the 30, inside the 25 to the 20. Three-yard line, an eight-yard pickup for Lamont Slade and a first down for the Glen Grizzlies. Huge play by Lamont Slade. And you have to give credit to the offensive line where it's due. Trent Brown, Rudy Martinez, Jacob Trim, Nick Maddox, and Slade Josich. Quick give there to Slade, and he's going to lose a yard on that one as he's pushed back to the 23-yard line. It's so a loss of one Yeah, if we Slade. go back and talk about that first play, it was a huge job right there, and it would have been a touchdown if not for the heroics of Gabe Williams, again, the leading tackler tonight for McCallum. He's having a great game as well. They continue to run the ball. Let's see if McGuire is looking to pass here. Looks like pressure's coming from McCallum. Thompson in motion. Give it to him. McGuire back to pass. He's rolling. Hits Thompson at the 10. Gets almost to the 10. Excuse me. He's out at the 14-yard line, so a 9-yard pickup to Corin Thompson. Putting up a third and two. Pushed out of bounds by the senior defensive back, Anthony Morris. So in the red zone again, you were able, weren't able to capitalize one of the times trying to avenge that right here. Third and two, give us to Slade. He's going to push, 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 and they're going to give him the first down as he's going to get to the 10-yard line. So four-yard pickup for Lamont Slade and another first down for the Grizzlies. 
Hey, first down after first down. That's what you want to see from your offense. It looks like they're a markup just at the 10 yard line. So, 16 carries, four yards for uh, four yards of carry, 64 yards for Lamont Slade. A great so, second half. Absolutely. <laughs> Snap, give Thompson outside to the 10, inside to the five, all the way down to the three yard line. Huge play. A seven yard gain for Corin Thompson. Grizzlies. Seven yard play, but again, a flag was thrown here on the near sideline and it looks like it could go against the offense. Coach Schoenfield out near the 16 yard line trying to get a, an explanation from the referee. Well, we've seen them move the ball back quickly. It might be against McCallum. And I think they're going to take the penalty. Let's see. So was an uh, offsides, neutral zone infraction, but offsides on the play was McCallum. They'll decline the call, so it will be a seven-yard pickup for Thompson on the play. First and goal for the three for the Grizzlies. Got to take advantage right here. Look for Morris, who's usually their power back here near the end, but they might just give it to Slade after this. This is his drive. He's done it almost by himself, so look for Slade here. Well, it's actually Morris and Hatter are going to be in the backfield. Morris is the bruiser. So good to see his injury wasn't long term. Give it to him. He's going to take it outside to left. He's going to push in for a touchdown. Three yard touchdown for Julian Morris. Second touchdown of the game. And we're tied at 20 here with 231 left to go in the third quarter. This is where that PAT, missed PAT by McCallum comes into play. If Glenn is able to put this through, they will take the lead. It would be huge for them to try to get some momentum back. Nine carries, 41 yards, two touchdowns for Julian Morris in this one. Uh, Soto gets ready for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. So the Grizzlies take a one-point lead now. 21-20, 231 in the third quarter. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Two thirty-one left in the third quarter. Grizzlies convert on a big, big, big drive after that that penalty. Not the penalty, the the, the punt. That put them all the way back at the sixteen. That's an eighty-four yard drive for the Grizzlies, capped off by three yard touchdown run by Julian Morris, his second of the game. And as we mentioned, the missed extra point by Joseph Limon. Now it's Glenn leading it, twenty-one to twenty. With two thirty-one in the third quarter. Soto. Set to kick off. He'll kick from the 40. It's a short kick. They're going to go for an onside kick, it looked like. And it is recovered at the 50 by Connor Boggs. Not sure what was going on in that play. Yeah, Connor Boggs obviously had the huge interception at the beginning of the game, but I guarantee you he didn't go into this game thinking he was going to get any yardage on a kickoff. I guarantee you that was not in his game plan for tonight. Interesting call there by Coach Schoenfield. It looks like it was a design offside, but middle was heavily covered. So Knights will take over at midfield. Davis gives to Sutton, and he is met immediately by Brian Creel. So he'll get two yards on the carry. It'll be a second and eight for Brian Creel having a big game himself on defense. They know what the play is, and I think we were talking earlier, you know, if you're an NFL fan, Giants play the Cowboys this week, and Landon Collins came out and said, we're going to force them to make Dak throw the ball, and we're going to try to stop Zeke, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to let uh, Cole Davis. Davis beat them because... They are loading up the box and meeting Sutton with everything they got at the line of scrimmage. Fake the give to him, the throw. Lewis caught at the 30, at the 41 yard line. So a pickup of seven. It'll be third and one for McCallum. Again, you live with those short passes. You know, you don't want to live with a third and one, but you'll live with a seven yard pickup. 
<laughs> yeah, and we talked about their biggest playmaker, Jalen Sutton. If you take out the 33 yards that got him in position for a score, his biggest run of the night, seven. That's just a testament to that defense. Davis back. Shotgun. Ball's at the 41. They need the 40. Davis is going to take it himself now, and he's met by a bunch of Grizzlies, and he's going to be stopped short, and they're going to mark him for a one-yard loss on the play. 113 clock running left in the third quarter. He's going to lose a yard on that one. It's going to bring up fourth and two. And I think McCallum's going to go for it on this one. First time tonight that Cole Davis has called his own number and hasn't picked up any positive yardage. Stand up here for this one. A lot going on. Huge play coming up for the Glenn defense. Could be a momentum shifter. 52 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Fourth and two set up. Davis tried to roll out to the outside. He was met by a bunch of defenders, and that's going to force McCallum into a timeout. They're going to take their second timeout, and that'll leave them with one left because they're going to timeout and try to talk it over. This could be a big change in the game if they don't get it. Yeah, it could be absolutely huge. If the defense comes up with this, with how many playmakers McCallum has, and to be able to stop them if they are able to in four straight plays, it would be huge and absolutely get this crowd back into it, would hype up their team, and get the offense back going out there with some momentum. What is Glenn dialing up here on fourth down? You're probably going to see lo a loaded box right here. You're probably going to see Towns. You're probably going to see Holmes. Or you're going to see you know, some of those linebackers. You're going to see them try to stack the box because right here you're planning on either more – Morris, or you're actually counting on Sutton. quarterback calling his own play. It's either Sutton or Davis, but they've been faking to give it to Sutton, and then Davis rolls out to the left. So they'll come from the shotgun now. Ball's on the 42. They need the 40-yard line. Snap. Give is to Sutton, and he's going to get the first down as he gets across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Three-yard pickup by Jalen Sutton. Yeah, I mean, if you came into this game, you saw the stats for Sutton. The last five times he's touched the ball, four, two, one, two, three. That's exactly what we're going to sign up for, and it's a great job by this defense. Clock running, 35 seconds left in the third quarter. This might be the last play of the third quarter. Your Glenn Grizzlies are leading 21 to 20. Well, McCallum is driving as they have the ball inside of Grizzly territory at the 39. Sutton goes out wide, screen pass to him, and Lee Pollock meets him, breaks a tackle, gets across the 35 inside to about the 26-yard line. Lee Pollock unable to wrap him up and bring him down. That's a 13-yard pickup. Yeah. Jalen Sutton would out of the been, backfield. Yeah, it would have been for a loss, or at least he would have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and he wasn't able to wrap him up, and it paid huge. And you, you would ask Lee Pollock after the game if he should have made that tackle. He's going to tell you, yeah, and I'm sure he's not happy about that one, but he's made so many plays all night for this defense. That's the end of the third quarter now. Glenn holding on to a fourth-quarter lead. It's the first time they've had a lead this late in the game. As they lead it by one with 12 minutes to go, we're going to switch field positions, go to the other side, and we'll be back on the other side of the break here on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. From West Texas all the way to the Bayou and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the this is the KMAX Sports Texas. Network, bringing your teams to you. Hey, Booster parents, get involved as a new all-in-one tool that helps you raise funds, sign up volunteers, collect items, and promote your event or cause. It's never been so easy to get so much done. Forget the multiple volunteer, fundraising, and sign-up lists. It's now all-in-one. Get involved today at GetInvolvedCo.com. That's GetInvolvedCo.com. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Start of the fourth quarter, 12 minutes to go. Mc, uh, McCallum driving as they have the ball on the Glenn 25-yard line. Glenn leading it, looking for their first win of the young season. 0-2 so far in this one. How big of it if your first win came against a great team like McCallum, a ranked team? Absolutely. McCallum played in the state semifinals last year, lost to College Station, who ended up winning the state championship in 5A last year. So it'll be a first and 10 for the 25. Three wide receivers out to the right. Davis back to pass. He's looking deep. He's got a slant right down the middle of the field. 
for a touchdown. A 25-yard touchdown for Cruz Escobar. That's his first catch of the game. And it goes for 25 and a score McCallum. 26-21 with 11-54 in the third quarter. Man, you worked so hard to try to force a situation where McCallum would go back to the ground where Glenn has dominated all night. And Lee Pollock was trying to make up for that missed tackle and it nearly got to Davis. Davis just barely got that off, maybe a half a second more. And he's coming down with Pollock. Unfortunate, but... So McCallum this is what happens, though, when you start thinking about Lewis and Starberry and Sutton. A guy like Escobar gets wide open on the screen. And he's in there. Not even a screen, on a, on a slant. And he was in there. So McCallum's going to try to go for two here to make it a seven-point game. Now, if they don't get it, that's even worse for them because then a touchdown definitely beats you. So Glenn Deep is going to have to dial up something good here. Yeah, and adding on to that, you just took your last time out with 11.50 board left to go in the fourth quarter. You have nothing that will stop the clock now. If you're on defense and you're not able to take a timeout, if you're on defense and Glenn is able to move the ball on you like they were on that last drive, you can't stop them. You can't catch your breath. If you want to try to dial something up for maybe a last second play, especially with how close this game is, you can't do it. So interesting call there on the other side by Coach Gammerdinger, wasting his last time out, 11.54 to go. Glenn has to take advantage, and it'll be even more to try to exploit that here, late here in this fourth quarter. Absolutely, a 25-yard touchdown for Cruz Escobar, a slant right down the heart of that defense, and he went in the end zone untouched. And they are lining up. They will not attempt the extra point. They're going for two. Cole Davis in at quarterback. Sutton next to him. And there's going to be a, a false start on the offense. Going to push him back. Another five yards makes it even tougher. So that's a huge costly penalty for McCallum. That's going to push them back to the eight-yard line now. So not easy to just draw up a simple running play now. They're going to have to try to get creative on this one. Yeah, even And no timeouts to call. So they, ha they have to... Do with, with something on the, the fly. Yeah, do with what they have on the field. So that play calling might have been different. But let's see if Davis changes the play. 18 seconds on the play clock. Snap. He's back to pass. He's looking to throw. He throws in the end zone. No good. No good. Ball hits the ground. As Sam Martin helps out in coverage. So the two-point conversion is no good. However, McCallum with the touchdown. Leads it 26 to 21. 11:54 left in the third quarter. Isaac Armijo came up with the pick on the corner of the end zone. Did a great job. Really read the coverage well. They double teamed uh, the intended receiver was Stawberry. They double teamed him here on the near sideline, right by that nearest pylon. They did a good job. The defense dialed it up perfectly. A great call by Coach Schoenfield on the play. And now you're just hunting for a touchdown, and the extra point really has no not that huge of relevance. Exactly. So. Two-point conversion, no good. Great play on defense. I keep confusing Martin with Amarillo out there because <laughs> at 23, it looks like a 13. And they're both about the same size. But nonetheless, Sam Martin is back to receive the kickoff with Jarvis Henderson. We've seen a lot of short kickoffs except for the one that uh, Dipaz took back for 81 yards. So we'll see what Limon does on this kickoff. It's going to be a short one or a long one. And it's interesting to see now if you score a touchdown, if you're Glenn, you're not forced to try to kick, get a two-point conversion to try to make it a field goal game. With how inconsistent the special teams play has been for McCallum, Glenn is a lot more comfortable in that area. Kickoff is up. Towns is going to pick it up at the 30. He's going to take it across the 35, break a tackle, and he's going to get all the way out to the 40-yard line. So great field position for the Grizzlies as Townsley gets his second return of the game. Yeah, a little extracurricular activity going down in the mid bottom of that pile. And it was for the Knights, it was led by Joseph Limon. So how, how about that for a kicker? A kicker kicks it off and then goes and covers his own kick. <laughs> the kid is everywhere. 11.49 left in the game. 26-21. You just think the way Glenn is moving the ball all day, the way they're running it. They're in a good position here. Morris gets the handoff. He's across the 40. And he's going to get to about the 42-yard line. So I guess they'll give him a two-yard game. And it looked like Bone still was in on the tackle there for McCallum. He has a couple tackles tonight. 
a couple of last minute substitutions for the Knights. Ball on the 42, they need midfield for the first down. Shotgun formation. Nichols in to the outside. He's going to get out at the 48 yard line. So they'll give him six on the play. Nichols out on the sweep. So six yard gain for Shamir Nichols brings up third and two. I like what Coach Schoenfeld has done. Using Nichols as kind of like a third down back to try to break it out into the flat or try to get around the tackles. He's done a really good job so far in that small role. Third and two for the Grizzlies. Balls at the 48. They need midfield. Two running backs in the backfield. Snap is high. The give is to Thompson. He waits around, dances around, gets across midfield. He gets to the 45-yard line. So a seven-yard pickup for Corin Thompson. And more importantly, a first down for the Grizzlies. Elijah Griffin was on the tackle there for the Knights. And the Knights, they're doing a good job. They're not, they're in the ultimate mode of bend, don't break. They've allowed some good chunkage of yardage, but they haven't really allowed them to capitalize every single time. Less than 11 minutes and counting left in the game. Give Morris outside. Pushes, pushes, pushes. I'm going to mark him at the 42-yard line, so a three-yard pickup for Julian Morris. Second and seven. Yeah, late in games, you want to try to go to your bruiser, and for that, that's Morris for the Grizzlies. Again, this is usually when we see McGuire roll out on a pass here. So second and seven. Thompson in motion. They're going to give him. He's going to roll out to the right. Looking for open field. He's going to get across to 40. And he's going to get across to the 41 yards. He's wrapped up by Gabe Williams on the tackle. Yeah, it was a good vision right there. 36 by yard in line, excuse me. So it'll be a third and two. Go ahead. Yeah, it was a good uh, motion inside there by Thompson. Got inside, we realized there was nothing that was going to be coming outside the receivers, outside of the numbers. So we did a good job of trying to pick up and make what was left of it. Third down and two. Grizzlies need the night 40, 35 yard line. Thompson again, fake, give it to Morris, up the middle. He gets across the 35. He's pushing for more, pushing, pushing. He's not going down yet. Across the 30, he's still going. And he is wow. knocked down at the 26-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup for Julian Morris. What a run. It's about nope. eight guys trying to bring <laughs> him down. Yeah, that was led the entire offensive line. Yosic, Maddox, Trim, Martinez, and Brown all had a hand in that run. Got to give the assist to them. Because that last extra seven to eight yards was not all on Morris. Slade and Morris. Slade in the background. In the back backfield, excuse me. Had her back there too. Give us to Slade. Pushes through. Pushes through. Fighting. And get to the 24 yard line. So two yard pickup by Slade. Yeah, last this effort by the tackler Bone Steel again. To try to make try to force a fumble right there, but it was a good job for ball security for Glenn, who's done a good job with that so far tonight, other than the one in reception. Second and eight from the 24. Grizzlies need the 16-yard line for the first. Nichols in motion. They'll give it to him. He's going to roll on the outside. He's going to bounce around, waiting for something to develop. And he's only going to get to... He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play to Nichols. No gain. And Nichols tried to get outside, and it seems like he chose the wrong hole to do because it looked like Henderson set the edge on the far sideline, and he chose to go inside instead, and he was met by a wall of defenders for McCallum. Big play here. Third and eight from the 24 McCallum. Definitely a passing down. Henderson, single coverage on the outside. Ball is fumbled. Lost by McGuire. He picks it back up. He's rolling out. He's looking for a play downfield. Throws it into heavy coverage, and it's picked off. Flag is down on the play, but it is picked off by no else but number four, Gabe Williams. Another tough pass there for Drew McGuire, but a flag is down. Just an errant throw right there by McGuire. There really was no need to throw it after the fumbled snap. Your only thought right there is to not lose any yardage. And the maybe ball was long. high, took a good bounce, and he was able to pick it up and roll around at the 40, and then just threw it up for grabs. And Gabe Williams was there for the interception, but we might... Now that will shift. But the penalty is against Glenn, but it's going to be negated. So the interception will go to McCallum. That's a huge turnover. You can't have that. With two turnovers now inside the red zone. You cannot have that if you're the Grizzlies. And again, at that point, you're just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. And usually when you see that, you just see the quarterback throw it out of bounds. And I know... We don't, we're not completely sure on Soto's range, but it looked like it was about to be a mid-30s field goal try, which isn't out of the question. At the very least, you can try to pin them inside the five if Soto is able to pull off a punt. So it's just 
Just not a very good decision by McGuire, just playing simple. But he will come back from it. We've seen him rebound it from earlier. 26-21, 8-26 left in the game. McCallum leading it. Gibbs Sutton met immediately by a wall of Grizzlies. As they're trying to finally knock him down, they're going to call forward progress at the 20-yard line. So no gain brings up second and 10. This is where his defense needs to step up and mm -hmm. get up another stop for the Grizzlies to give this offense another chance. Moving the ball, moving the ball. You can't have two red zone interceptions. You just can't have it. Yeah, it's going to be up to Callan Guyton, Jeff Francis, Daiku, and Matthew Hester up front. They've been doing a good job all night trying to hold this run game, but they're going to have to try to come up with something big and maybe look for Townsley or look for Holmes to try to make a big play in the secondary. Clock running, 7.46 left in the game. Davis rolls out to the right. He's chased by a bunch of Grizzlies. And who else but Brian Creel in on the tackle. A five-yard loss for McCallum. Davis, nowhere to go. Great pursuit by Creel. Huge. As I said, right before the second half kickoff, the two guys I was looking for, one of them was Brian Creel, and he's been in the backfield all night. It's just been a matter of finishing the play. And see if Noah able. Holmes can come up with a play now, your other boy. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they can come up big. Holmes has been quiet so far in this one, but they haven't really passed on him. Holmes moving around. Three wide receivers split left for the Knights. They're on the 15. They need their own 30. 7.05 left in the game. Remember, McCallum, zero timeouts. Looks like they're loading the box. Snap. Fake the give. And who's right there? The throw is out. But it is Jeff Francis Dyke. No, it is what, Lee Pollock. It is Lee Pollock in on the sack. Again, I said. Sack balls at the seven yard line. An eight yard loss. What a sack by Lee Pollock. Again, the two linebackers. I looked for them the entire time to not only make plays in the run game, but try to force some pressure on the quarterback. They did a huge job right there. The field position battle again is on Glenn's side. They're pinning from out of their own end zone. Huge play by the defense. What a way to get your first sack of the game. An eight yard loss brings it to fourth and 23. And now you have Limon punting from the end zone. Snap is high and it goes over his head. It's going to be a safety. The snap was high over his head. A safety for the Grizzlies. They're down three and they get the ball back. Huge, huge right there. Big miscue by the McCallum special teams. And you see the Glenn Grizzlies come back to the sideline. They're fired up. They know they're right back in this game. Huge play. The defense set that up, though. Obviously bringing all the momentum. McCallum is pinned inside their own end zone. Even if you do get a punt away, it's going to be great field position for Glenn. Everything's turning up Glenn over these last two to three minutes. If you're just joining us, all of it's turning up Glenn. 26-23 McCallum. Glenn Grizzlies just with the safety. And again, hopefully have good field position coming in for this next drive for the offense. Now that, when you look at a game, that sack becomes the turning point. Mm -hmm. That sack becomes a turning point, and then the big play by Brian Creel on the five-yard loss pushes them back, have to punt from the end zone. That snap is probably shorter than what the, what the snapper is used to. Goes right over the head. He had no chance at it. Three points, and they get the ball back. I mean, you saw the attitude from Limon. The left his hands, and Limon didn't even try to jump, didn't even try to move. He just looked up as it almost clanked the, almost clanked the crossbar of the field goal post. 6-13 left to go here in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us, you're in for a fun one. 26-23 McCallum, but Grizz the Grizzlies are threatening. They do, and they are about to receive this punt from Limon. Free kick for Limon. And he's going to kick from his own 20, I believe. So either way, great field position would be coming up for the Grizzlies as you have Henderson and Martin in at the 25 and 30-yard line respectively waiting for this one. And they got Grizzlies everywhere in case they try to pooch it or make it short. They'll actually allow him to kick off, which is I always thought you had to punt it on the safety. But we'll guess high school 20. is different. We'll be from the 20. 6-13 left. Line drive kick, Townsley again. He's gonna bring it across midfield, all the way through to the 30, 36 yard line. The Grizzlies will start at their own 36 yard line after a great return by Townsley. That's you can feel the momentum starting to shift and go in the way of Glenn. 6.07 left in the game, 26-23. Here we go, EJ. Mm -hmm. Hey, buckle up. It's money time right here. That's what they call the fourth quarter here in Texas. 17 carries, 66 yards for Slade. 12 carries, 57 yards for Morris. 13 carries, 76 yards for Thompson. He can go to anybody here. And the give is to Thompson. 
He leads, cuts across, gets across the 30, outside to the 24-yard line. A 13-yard pickup on the outside sweep for Corin Thompson. Nearly got free, but was tackled again by Darius Lewis, who has a touchdown on the offensive side of the ball. But here comes Glenn Up. They're trying to get a good tempo going. Give again is to Thompson. Shakes one, moves, gets across, pushing. He's going to pick up a yard on the play. Second and nine from the 23-yard line. Hey, give me that carry. Corin Thompson now 90 yards in the game. Yeah, Carbaje again for the defense. He haven't said his name a lot, and that means that the offensive line's doing his job because he's such a menace there in the middle. We haven't even mentioned the other big boy back there is uh, the 310 pounder uh, as well, which is Lloyd Barrier. Morris gets outside in the middle, cross. He's going to get to the 18 yard line, 19 yard line. Four yard pickup for Julian Morris. And again, 35. Here, if you're Coach Gammerdinger of McCallum, you're trying to call a timeout right here to try to get going. The problem is, you, you don't, don't have, have any left. Two backs in the backfield. Give. It's the Slade. He's going to barrel across. He's not going to get anything. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He likes to lose a yard. So they're going to push the ball back to the 20-yard line. Decision time here. Fourth and six from the 20. Do you go for it or do you get the points? It seems like from here it would be about a 37-yard try. This looks like a couple personnel coming off. Henderson will come out. Oh, I'm sorry. At this point at the 20, it becomes a 37-yarder. That's just a tough kick for any high school kicker. And Coach Schoenfield is going to call his first time out. And they're going to talk it over and try to get ready. We're looking for Soto on the sideline. We're seeing if he's going to trot out there. I haven't been able to see him. No, and usually you see, like in the NFL to the left, you see guys practicing their kick. I mean, they're going for it here. Just wondering if they can come up with the right play call. We haven't seen much of McGuire passing the ball in the second half. He can roll out and maybe find that big tight end wide open like they've had him all night. Yeah, that's exactly. Took the words right out of mouth. I'm looking for Nate Hatter right here. He's been the red zone target. He's done a great job and maybe wants to avenge maybe the costly drop he had in the first quarter. But Hatter's been so dominant as most tight ends are in today's game in the red zone. So look for him to try to get free up in the middle or maybe catch a seam into the end zone. They are going through all the scenarios right here in the huddle. I mean, this is a moment for this Glen Grizzly football program. Again, their first season in district football play. Looking for their first win here on a Thursday night. A bye week next week. They open the season in district football. They have to travel on the road to a tough place in Elgin. And they'll worry about that in two weeks. They're looking for a win right now. It'll be fourth and six from the 20. They need the 14 yard line. Snap is to McGuire. He fakes the game. He's gonna roll out to the left. Looking for someone wide. It's broken up, but it's ricocheting. It's caught by a receiver at the six-yard line. Cut by Lamont Slade. What a play. The ball was tipped by Henderson. And now there's a flag on the play. Of course there is. An official's timeout, but... Ryan Bonesteel made the play. He was in coverage, and he tipped it up. He thought he made the play, but Lamont Slade, never giving up on the play, circled back around, was able to make the catch. It's a huge play if it stands, but there is an injured knight there at the eight-yard line. What a play. What a play. What a play. The ball was out. It's actually, if I'm looking based on who's on the field, I think that's Sam Martin that came up Sam with Martin. that with that. Uh, Deflection. He went deep, rolled out to the left. Was looking for Henderson. The ball was tipped in the air by a McCallum defender. Sam Martin right there hauls it in at the six, which would be good for a 14-yard pickup in a first town. But there was a timeout, and we're looking for a penalty flag that's being picked up right now. So we'll see what the call is. We're still waiting. These referees take a little, little <laughs> bit of time on these calls. Yeah, and again, there it is also an in. It's not necessarily an injury timeout, but there is an injury on the field. And it was um, number 19, Zach Napier, who obviously doesn't feel great about that. I mean, he was covering Martin on the play, and he thought the ball wasn't coming to him. He was going to try to celebrate with bone steel. But so it's going to be a five-yard penalty. I don't know what it's on. Ouch. Another penalty for Glenn. Seven on the game. Fourth and 11 now from the 25. Negates a 14-yard first down. 
Big play here. McGuire back to pass. Looking. Throwing deep into the end zone. Got him. He's got one more touchdown. A 25-yard touchdown for Sam Martin. Wide open in the end zone. Glenn takes a 29 to 26 lead. 414 left in the game. Wow, what a play right there. Exactly how you drew it up. McGuire staying calm in the pocket and delivers a perfect strike into the corner of the end zone. Never a doubt. Grizzlies up on McCallum, a powerhouse. What a play by Sam Martin after he makes the deflection catch to bring them in. A penalty pulls him back, goes out on fourth and 11, makes a 25-yard touchdown catch in the back of the end zone. It looks like the PAT will be a little bit closer for Soto. It looks like it was encroachment on the defense. What a play. Wow. And now, if Glenn is able to put forth this extra point don't even have to worry about a field goal from Limon 414 left to go in the fourth quarter 42 yards receiving on the day for Sam Martin and none bigger than that touchdown as he holds the extra point kick is down it is good and that'll, Grizzlies will give them 30 as they now lead it 30 to 26 in this one what a turn of events this game has everything and if you've been following us, you know this game is far from over with 414. McCallum with their late rallies in the first two weeks of the season. They're going to try to fight and claw back into this one. And they got to get things right on the right on the right page right away. No timeouts to change plays and change calls. So we'll see how important that comes up. But the Glenn Grizzlies on 4th and 11. After their seventh penalty of the game, they find Sam Martin in the back of the end zone for a 25-yard score. What a play. And didn't it have to come after a penalty? I mean, how many have you had today from both sides, especially on the Glenn side? You know, not a great game on the mental side of the ball, but when you contribute and when you come through with a huge throw by McGuire after another penalty, I mean, it's almost poetic justice after, you know, you gotten taken back so many times throughout this game but to finally capitalize in front of your home crowd is absolutely huge. So Soto's back to kick. Kick is up, line drive, kick. Oh, and it's going to go out of bounds and that's going to be a penalty. So now McCallum is going to take over at the 40-yard line. Oof. Can't have that. And obviously not the kick that Soto was looking for, but what the defense has done, they're trying to ride the wave of those last few tackles coming courtesy of Creel and coming courtesy of Lee Pollock. Creel and Pollock made the probably two biggest plays so far of the young season on defense on that last drive against McCallum. And they're going to try to ride that momentum. All right, so it'll actually be the 35-yard line that they'll take over on. The Grizzlies. Four touchdowns and a safety in this one. They lead it by four. Cole Davis back to pass. Slings one to the outside. Oh, no, and he's going to break a tackle. It's going to be Lewis. Going to break a tackle and get all the way outside to the 25-yard line. It's a 40-yard pass. Wow. And that was Starberry on the play. A 40-yard completion to Takai Starberry. Inside at the 25-yard line. Four minutes and four seconds left in this one. Hey, ben, don't break. Huge gain right there. But now you have a much shorter field to work with. Try to load the box and try to keep them one-sided. Snap. Give. It's the Sutton. Nowhere to go. He picks up maybe a yard. And he's out to about the 20... 23 yard line so we'll call it second and eight from the 23 clock running down it's at 350 right now man if you're gonna put a storyline to this game if the Glen Grizzlies are able to hold on it's gonna be the neutralization of their best playmaker on McCallum Jalen Sun this has had nowhere to go after that 33 yard run early in the first half clock continuing to run it's at 334 remember no timeouts from McCallum as they're trying to get all the calls now from the sidelines not able to run and get the call off Play clock at seven, second and eight. Sutton out to pass, they're looking for the screen. They actually hit type die pass in the middle of the field. And he's gonna get out to the 15. They're gonna give him enough for the first down. So an eight yard pickup for Tino Dipaz. And it is first 
and 10 from the Grizzly 15. Clock continuing to run. It's at 3.15 right now. As clock's going to continue to bleed dry, maybe that's the strategy over there for Coach Gammerdinger. Not going to let that offense try to get back on the field. They're going to try to bleed this out. First and 10 for the 15. Fake to Sutton. Off to, to, to Starberry. He's going to get out of bounds at the 9-yard line. So a 6-yard pickup for Takai Starberry. It's going to bring up 2nd and 4 from the 9-yard line. Clock stops out of bounds at 2.55. Grizzlies 30-26 to 26 leading at this one in the 4th quarter. Alan Cepeda, EJ Sanchez, Rosie Vega, live from Cedar Park here at Gupton Stadium. Cole Davis, looking for a game-winning drive here. Snap is to him, fakes the handoff, and he's going to roll outside, and he's going to met by Noah Holmes. Huge tackle by Holmes at the five-yard line. So a pickup of about, I guess you'd call it four, Still not enough for the first down, so it's going to be third and one from the six. Big play there from Noah Holmes. Yeah, Noah Holmes, as we said, usually the ball hawk right there in the secondary, but they haven't really tested him in the middle of the field. It's mostly been passes to the immediate sidelines and into the flats. Might have a penalty as they're going to move the ball back now. Looks like they're moving back to the 24. They move it to the actually to the 19, so that's a 15-yard penalty. You wonder what happened on that play, but going to set up a second and long. And Cole was trying to walk off as if a timeout was called. He can't walk to the sideline. Ball's on a 19-yard line. First down is at the 5. So second down and 14 to go. Davis, pressure, finds him. Almost picked off in the end zone. <laughs> and Davis was pressure came. Absolutely crushed on that play by Lee Pollock came in late and just absolutely lit up Davis didn't give him a clean pocket to throw in it was nearly picked off in the secondary Bryson Hunter also in on the pressure third and 15 now for McCallum Glenn Grizzly faithful trying to make some noise trying to rally that's a big penalty now for McCallum as they were inside the five yard line third and 15 at the 20 Sutton out in motion Pressure coming. The throw on the run. Oh, and it's dropped in the end zone by Dipaz. He got behind the secondary and he just dropped it. Great throw there from Davis, but Dipaz couldn't hold on. Man, Fourth down. It would have been a great catch from Dipaz. You saw he leaned out as far as he possibly could have, and it looks like he just clanked off the edge of his fingertips. Glenn catches a break there, but now it's fourth down here, and it could be the play of the game. 224 left in this one. Fourth and 14. Ball's on the 19-yard line. Sam Martin, Brian Creel signaling for this Glenn Grizzly crowd to make some noise. We've got a lot of substitutions going. Play clock is at five. It's at four. There's no timeouts left. We're going to have a delay of game. And we're going to move the ball back another five yards. Again, not knowing the situation, Cole Davis is looking at the bench. He has no timeouts left. Wait. I think the nice way to put it is this is less than ideal for McCallum. Fourth and 19. You have to get to the five to get a first down, and you're not even in the red zone anymore. A lot I mean, of confusion going out on the sideline as calls are being yelled. Players are running there. There's no formation. Play clock continuing to run again. 224 left in this one. Fourth down and 19. Grizzlies need a stop. And then they can run out the clock. Thigh pass in motion. Here comes pressure. They bring the house. Incomplete turnover on downs, and the Grizzlies take over at their own 24-yard line. Ben, don't break. It's that Grizzly defense. Hey, guess who on that? Lee Pollock coming in, making the pressure, forcing an errant throw. What a night he's had. He's definitely got to be in the conversation for defensive MVP. Getting into the backfield, not giving Davis a clean pocket to throw in. And what a play for this Grand Grizzly defense. 30-26 to 26 as the Grizzly take over on downs. 2.20 left to go. They'll take over. Again, McCallum, no timeout, so Glenn, without a two-minute warning in high school, they can simply run out the clock here. Wire, snap, Morris takes the give, run up the middle, get across the 25, 
and he's going to be down at the 27. So a three-yard gain for Morris. Clock running, 204. Yeah, first down would do it. 202 left to go. And the play clock just restarting. All it would take was one first down. And the only thing Coach Schoenfield can tell his backs, hold on to the ball. Protect the rock. That is the only thing that can be on your mind right now. That's yards right. do not matter. Seven yards stand between Glenn and their first win of the season. As you mentioned, a first down should clinch it. They'll actually call it second and six from the 28. The give. Slade pushes forward, dives forward, and they're going to give him the 29-yard line. Excuse me, the 34-yard line. They give him the 34, 33-yard line. Me third and one. Clock continues to run, and if I'm Glenn Grizzly, if I'm Drew McGuire, I don't run this play. Run this clock down as seconds. much as you can. Run the clock down. 105 left on the clock. Play clock at 15. They take the snap. Thompson looking to get outside. He's trying to change direction. He's not going to get the first down. And that's going to run this clock down really short. So you wonder if they're going to run it down and maybe punt it late. But fourth and second now. Decision time. As you mentioned, no need to snap the ball in that situation. You can hold on to it. Yeah, there's an injured knight on the far side of the field, and it's Anthony Morris, the senior linebacker. And he's had a really good game on the defensive side of the ball, but it looked like... Well, they're stretching him out as if it's a cramp. So this is a tough situation for Glenn. You don't want to see the clock stop. Thompson trying to bounce to the outside. Couldn't get anything going. He actually lost a yard on the play. Fourth and two with 50 seconds to go. Glenn holding on to a four-point lead. Yeah, again, if I'm Drew McGuire, I, I'm holding on to that ball at least until single digits start. I'm not asking to bleed it completely, but it seems like the logical thing right there would be to bleed the play clock as much as you could to, even if you do have to punt it, you don't give them a chance to run an offensive play, and they have to take it back on the punt. So the play clock will start now. So Glenn has the opportunity to run it down to 10 seconds. Let's see if they'll do that and then maybe punt the ball away. Remember, we saw a bad snap on the other end of the field, so everything's got to go right as McGuire looks like he's in no rush to do anything right now. So he's going to let this play clock run all the way down. So there is about a nine-second difference, so it looks like they'll be able to call a timeout with 10 seconds left, and it'll be a punt, and then one last play for McCallum. And you wonder who's going to take the punt for McCallum and what Coach Gammerdinger is going to be able to tell who it is. You would think the two playmakers, you think it would either be uh, to Kai Stawberry or Jalen Sutton those are your two offensive playmakers and so you wonder which one will take it and you wonder if Glenn will even punt to them and try to force them to at least have just hopefully just one offensive play. I just wonder if you could run around for nine seconds back and forth east and west. There's nine seconds left on the clock. Fourth risk. and two from the 32 yard line. Glenn needs a big strong punt and no return and that would leave Davis and McCallum with probably one last heave or some sort of a crazy trick play or screen pass and open up some lanes but uh, you know based on what we've seen I mean they're not going to be able to really throw the ball down the field they're going to have to drop something short and let Sutton who's been contained for the most part all game make a play. Yeah I mean if Glenn's able to hold on and you're able to beat a team that's only lost one time in the last 365 days a full calendar year if you're able to hold on this is a huge win going into district. Absolutely. Great win for this program. Again, first year eligible in the district. District 13. 13, 4A, Division 2. Soto is back in. Back to receive the kick. It looks like that's Gabe Williams back there to receive the kick. Snap, kick. It's a high kick in the air clock is running it's bouncing it's taking a Glenn bounce and that's gonna do it clock runs out the ball bounces the clock runs out and Glenn wins this one 30 to 26 for their first win of the season first win as a district program for Rob Schoenfield and these Glenn Grizzlies 30 to 26 what a victory for the Glenn Grizzlies well you see Gabe Williams took it back just 
action on, on whether, whether the ball was down or not. Coach Gammerdinger obviously not happy, but the call stands. Grizzlies win 30 to 26, and they will shake hands in the middle. What a win for this program. Absolutely, and it, it was the perfect play. Coach Schoenfield talks about special teams all the time, and instead of kicking it right to the to the receiver, put it in a place where no one can catch it, let that ball bounce around, clock runs out, Glenn holds on on a come-from-behind victory. Fourth and 11, Sam Martin, 25-yard touchdown after the penalty. Glenn wins it there. They improve to one and two on the season. They have a bye week coming up. They go to Elgin on September 28th. You know we'll be there. This team, huge, huge, huge win just based on everything they were faced with. Giving up big third downs, the penalties. Yeah, was just Finding a, a way to win. Drew McGuire, ice water in his veins, delivering a strike to Sam Martin. 25 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, we're going to talk about the touchdown a lot, as it should be talked about. But we cannot forget about Brian Creel and Lee Pollock Huge switching plays. the momentum. A sack, I believe, for Creel. And Pollock came in on that last play. And it's... it's they had the five-yard la five loss on the run. That was Pollock for Cole Davis, and then they got the eight-yard sack from Creel, and that set up the punt, and then they snapped it out of bounds of safety, and Glenn got the ball back. So this Glenn defense, the crowd's going crazy. They're happy, and they can really enjoy this one. And what a great game yeah. for these running backs. Especially. And we will come back. We will give you a quick recap on this amazing victory by the Grizzlies. We'll be back with your post-game show. Grizzlies 30, Knights 26. We'll be right back on the KMX Sports Bite Media Network. Bite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Bite has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website, Bite, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Bite magazine today. Get in the game with Bite Media. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. The KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right, three KMAX Sports Campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Jace Andrews, Blake Herrera, and EJ Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to enter and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us, info at kmaxsports.com. The KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the state capital if it was full of sports. I mean, the rotunda is more than large enough for basketball or volleyball. And let's face it, anything we do in there is going to be better than what's going on right now. Plus, those guys only work every two years. We bring your teams to you every doggone day. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, welcome back to the post-game show brought to you by Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant in on Bell Boulevard here in Cedar Park, Texas. Best happy hour in town, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Check us out at LosReyesTexas.com. Glenn picks up the impressive victory, 30-26, to 26, their first victory as a district varsity program. Uh, huge 
come from behind win. Again, the play of the game. You have to look at fourth and 11 after a huge penalty. We go down to that, that, that third down play tipped by Henderson, caught by Martin, called back. Very next play, Martin in the back of the end zone, 25 yards. Huge play for Glenn. They come up with the victory. Some stats, Drew McGuire, 10 for 22 for 168 yards, two interceptions, two touchdowns. 231 yards on the ground as a whole for this uh, Glenn Grizzly offensive attack. 15 rushes and 69 yards. Two touchdowns for Julian Morris. Lamont Slade, 18 rushes for 65 yards. Corin Thompson, 16 rushes for 89 yards. Nichols, uh, 5 for 13. And McGuire, 1 for 4. Sam Martin with the huge touchdown. He finished the day with three catches and 42 yards. Corin Thompson, two catches, 29 yards. Nate Hatter, two catches, 34 yards. Jarvis Henderson, two catches, 28 yards. Uh, everybody did their part. And I know when I talk to Coach Schoenfeld this week and we get ready for the Elegant game, he'll definitely look to, like, like you mentioned, so many people were instrumental. We'll look at the Sam Martin touchdown. That was huge. We'll look at McGuire. But you, as you mentioned, Brian Creel, uh, we look at Brian Creel. We look at Lee Pollock. We look at some of the plays that Alex Townsley made on special teams, mm -hmm. right? And and the the unsung heroes, right? You you, you mentioned Julian, uh, the running back Sutton, Morris. Jalen Sutton, Jalen Sutton for them didn't run. So that's Kyle Callen Guyton. That's Matthew mm -hmm. Hester. That's Jeff Francis Daiku. Those boys up front handled their business, limiting this star running back who came into the game averaging 170 wow. yards on the ground with six touchdowns on the season. They limited him to less than 100 yards on the ground. Didn't get anything going. Uh, everybody contributed to this game. Even at the last moment, Pedro Soto to have that perfect punt to roll out, run out the clock. This is an incredible team victory. This brings together morale. Uh, and I, I'm very excited to see what this team's going to do September 28th when they go down to Elgin and start off their district play. I mean, not enough. You, we'd be here all night if we uh, had to talk about every single little thing that the Glenn Grizzly did well. But if you would have told me at the beginning of this broadcast, after seeing the numbers that Sutton put up, if you would have told me that the Grizzlies would hold them, hold him to 39 yards on 16 carries. I would have told you to get out of the booth. I mean, that is <laughs> a crazy numbers for such a playmaker that he is. That is absolutely insane. Strawberry had six receptions for 126. And going into this game, we said it right before we went on that the key to this game was making McCallum play a game that they didn't want to play, and that's putting it into the hands of their quarterback Cole Davis who ended up going 11 for 20 for 171, which isn't a bad game, but it wasn't the game that McCallum was comfortable playing, and that's the reason why defensively the Glenn Grizzlies had such a miraculous game. I think also, too, if you look at some of the clock manager for McCallum, you know, burning those timeouts at the end of the game when there was a lot of confusion going on, some of the different exotic looks that Glenn was showing, you know, Davis and the offense, they were looking to possibly call a timeout, change the play, and it caused a lot of confusion. Then a huge penalty after Davis ran to the five-yard line after a big stop by Noah Holmes, uh, they they ha they get a penalty and it moves them back, brings out fourth and long, die pass with the drop in the end zone on third down, then fourth down, nothing doing. They take over on downs. Uh, it was a little scary because we thought Glenn left a little bit too much time on the clock, but they were able to hold on. Soto seals it with the punt, and they come up with a huge victory. Uh, again, first as a as a varsity program officially. They're one and two on the season. They have Elgin on the 28th. We'll be down there as always. Uh, uh, start at 7. We'll have a full 30-minute pregame show with you. We'll have interviews from the players and the coaches. Have everything we need to get you ready for that first opener for the Glen Grizzlies. Um, any last thoughts, EJ? I mean, this was an this was amazing to be in the booth for such a historic game for Glenn. I mean, you have such just playmakers everywhere. You have everybody contributing, the special teams, the defense, the offense. Everybody had a part in this win, and they're going to have to take it into district. And speaking of districts, some of the other teams in the district were in action tonight. Elgin, who they opened up against, lost to Pflugerville 40-17. to McCallum's old coach leading the charge over there for the Panthers. So Elgin drops their game. Eastview wins a convincing fashion against Reagan High School. That is the Raiders 70-14. to So that's an offense we're going to have to track for the rest of the season. And the Rouse Raiders beat the Weiss Wolves. So two teams in Glenn's district start off coming into district play off of a loss. So that's going to be huge. We're ready for district, and I'm excited to be here for it. And, again, you look at 
Jalen Sutton, as you mentioned, averaging 170 yards in the game. He didn't even get 40 yards on the ground, so that's a huge win for them on defense. They couldn't get the run game going. They forced Davis to throw the ball. He, he made some big throws. The throw to Escobar for the touchdown. He found another touchdown late. Uh, he was able to get some things done. They got uh, Starberry in motion. He was able to make some plays. Legs on the ground. Same thing with Lewis, but again, the defense of Glenn made the plays, all the plays that they needed to make, and, and they earned this win. They, they earned this win. This is a win that they deserve. They went on. They played hard to the very last minute. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Schoenfeld is very excited. And a sweep for the program. <laughs> Freshman went on this week, 8 nothing against McCallum. Then the JV team wins 38-8 to against Toledo. And now the varsity boys, they take care of their business. So a great 3-0 and week for the Glenn football program here at Cedar Park in at uh, Gupton Stadium. So um, that's all I got. If all you got, right. Anything left? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. Make sure to join us for the next game against the Glen Wild, uh, the Glen, sorry, the Elgin, <laughs> Wildcats. the Elgin Wildcats. That will open up district play, and Glen will, as always, be fighting for a playoff spot. We hope you're here to join us. Friday, September 28th. Tune in at 7 p.m. EJ Sanchez and myself will be here for the pregame show. For everybody involved on the program, Merle Bertrand, Rosie Vega, everybody at KMAX Sports, Grizzlies win 30 to 26. You have a great night. This is the KMAX Sports Network.